It was an evening almost like any other aboard the passenger ship Volton, as it made its way to Jahal Cove. The travelers gathered in the commissary to drink, socialize, and eat the, um, special soup. Among these wayfarers are three faces new to the region. The smooth-talking Ezra Lockwood, a swindler looking for adventure and fortune. The mysterious Wake Scalebound, traveling incognito for reasons his own. And the jovial Eloy, a simple centaur, just looking to make people smile. Everyone seemed drawn to Eloy, some to take advantage of his good nature, others for seemingly more altruistic purposes. Regardless of reasons, no one had ever seen a centaur this far out to sea before, and his natural charisma and charm made him difficult to dislike. The evening went on, and the waves grew as the guests nestled into their cots for the night. The rocking of the seas were rough, but not as rough as what was to come. The sounding of the alarm bell broke the cacophony of waves and creaking wood, the staff ushering each passenger up to the top deck where the captain awaited. Some cargo had been taken, and every passenger was a suspect. As tensions grew and fingers were pointed, the situation worsened. Suddenly, a frigate rammed the side of the Volton. Wake jumped into action to save the captain and a kindly clerical kobold named Reese from falling overboard. Before anyone could grasp the situation, or words could be exchanged, the mighty roar of an orc raiding party erupted as they began limping onto the Volton. Amidst the chaos, Ezra Wake and Eloy noticed something suspicious as a shifty goblin going by Skrung slinked away to the underbelly of the ship. They followed him below deck to discover a looting party of orcs, and while it became apparent that they once worked alongside Skrung, they were now in the process of double-crossing him. Taking the lesser of two evils into account, our unlikely heroes dispatched the orcs in the room only to find what they were looking for. Inside one of the crates was a coffin containing a goliath cadaver covered in scars. Wake and Skrung searched through these scars to discover a pulsating tumor in its stomach. However, before anyone could try to figure out exactly what it was, the angered yell of the orc captain bellowed from the room behind them. Quickly, Wake ripped the tumor out and shoved it into a jar as an uneasy feeling crept over him. Peering into the room beyond, they discover a red-headed mage doing battle with more orcs, and among them standing steadfast, their captain. The ensuing battle was fierce, but through determination, raw martial power, and newly found teamwork, Ezra, Eloy, Wake, Squung, and their new mage friends saw it through, even taking the orc captain alive in the process. When all was said and done, the ship was boarded by soldiers from Jahal Cove's militia, restoring order and offering our heroes respite. But many questions still hang in the air. What is this mysterious tumor? Why were there orcs after it? And what lies ahead for our intrepid adventurers? <laughs> Want to start that off? There we go. Welcome <laughs> back to the table. Good to have you back today. Uh, hope you all liked the recap. I hope you all enjoyed last week's session. Uh, there were a few questions uh, that we... Well, a few questions and concerns that I hope we will address this time. First of all, a lot of people were wondering about getting a map view, and well... Yep. Ta-da! Boom! There it is! There you go. Yeah. We got a map view now, so when the... Uh, there it goes. <laughs> so when uh, we uh, when combat initiates, yeah. yeah, when we need to see what's going on on the map, we'll have something for you. Uh, all of this will be evolving as we go along and grow into the set. This will not be our final table, by the way. Oh yeah, we got yeah. a much no, better we, table coming. We got a better table coming in. Yeah. And uh, we had a few questions about our characters. For example, what level are we? That's a decent question, I suppose. We're all starting at level three in this campaign. And uh, I had another question about my character. Uh, just something I needed to address. People were wondering if I was related to a certain Dumple Stiltskin <laughs> based on my character art, and the resemblance is a little striking, but I don't believe so. Good old Dumple. <laughs> but yes, we're back. We're ready. We have captured the orc captain. And Zito. What? 
got a lot of got a lot of well, crap what, on your head. Uh, what do you mean crap? A GM must always be ready with many hats. He must he must be many people at all times. But this Checks stuff out. is actually kind of waiting on my chin, so I think I'm going to do something about that. <laughs> oh, I'm <am> free. <laughs> okay. So yes, uh, do we have anything we would like to say before we get into this? I got through all the stuff I believe I needed to cover. Uh, anybody else? Yeah, no, I'm good. Uh, I saw it mentioned multiple times that sneak attack does work on ranged weapons. Uh, uh -huh. and, I was, and I apologize for not getting into. Yeah, that. I was, go we, I was going to ask go, if you wanted you to keep you your house rules. So or, much yeah. more. Yeah, first first rule of D and D: you don't argue about the rules during the game. Yeah, you don't yeah, so. you don't argue <laughs> about the rules with the DM during the game yeah. unless you want a lightning bolt up your ass. Yep. So you know we just went with it and asked the question later. NBD. I will say this, though. Uh, we have a few other things here uh, that was added onto this table, which is kind of nice. Uh, we received two dice, an extra dice tray. Yep, so, yeah, so now we can... <laughs> That'll make it a lot easier. Both lot roll easier. comfortably. Yes, and I also received these. These are... Big squishy dice. Yes, they're big squishy dice, but the thing about these are, these are my meta dice. So if uh, someone goes a little meta... They're going to have to make a dexterity saving throw because I will be tossing this at their heads. <laughs> <laughs> Just so we're clear. Do, right. do I get my Jack of All Trades bonus on that? or? Well, you have these, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, your yeah. big Bardic Inspiration yeah. dice. Bardic Inspiration dice <laughs> yeah. you didn't get to use last time. Yep. Did you even roll Bardic Inspiration last time? Nope, I... Nope, did not. <laughs> it's one of those things where it's like, I need to save this until the right moment. Yep. And then it's like, well, the right moment never really came. So I guess I'm just holding on to it. That's your own, that's your own paranoia it. talking because you oh, never exactly. know when the right moment is. Exactly. Because uh, one of the reasons I waited until so late in the campaign last time to use any of my key abilities, which are very good for Monk. Uh, granted, when I used it, was a pretty good opportunity to use it. Yes. Totally ripped off the orc captain's leg with it. Uh, but I waited so late in the campaign that I'm thinking like, you know what, I'm probably not going to get another chance to use it this day, so I'm, I'm going to go and do it. All yeah. right. All right, well, I guess we can get started. So last we left our heroes, you guys have just finished beating up, not killing, but beating up on that uh, orc captain. Just got knocked the fuck out. Yes, you knocked him so good that you're actually getting a lot of praise from the people over at the Jahal Coastline Guard. Huh. They have... Uh, been very, uh, very excited with you guys bringing in the person alive. It appears that uh, whoever is in charge has also been telling you that they look very highly upon taking in captives rather than just killing. Uh, Wake doesn't know how to deal with this sort of attention. He's always been kind of a loner, so he's just... Okay. Well, that's okay, uh -huh. because at this point, uh, it is now a little bit into the night. Uh, they made sure they got the cargo on board. They made sure they got all the passengers on board. You guys have all been given your own room. Uh, been given your own rooms. It's pretty much the same setup as you had before, but this time you guys in particular and uh, Scrung and Red, even uh, Pliskin and Rift have been uh, sent to the same quarters. You all have your own beds. You all have your own privacy things. But they wanted to stick you guys in a room on us for a purpose they haven't told you yet. Us three or these two? All, all of us. All, all, three all of you, okay. including the four other NPCs. Oh, okay, okay, all of us, got it. Yeah, so... The, the, four, the four important folk. <laughs> the ones with names. The ones with names, but also the ones that actually did combat. Right. Ah. The named NPCs who helped us. Yes. So, at this point, it is now, I'm gonna say, 2 o'clock in the morning. You're all exhausted from the fight. And at this point, like, you don't have to worry about combat. I'm gonna say that your HP, everything, all your magic's back. Okay. You've, you've had your extended rest. Good. I did keep this, but now I will go ahead and... Yeah, you're all back up to full. Don't worry about it. So now you're in the quarters right now. Everyone is kind of just like taking it easy, resting up. Uh, Skrung so far is the only one here that looks a little uh, pensive being in a large group of people. He's kind of just like sitting on his bed just like, yep, this is happening. <laughs> yep, this is happening. I can't believe it. It's happening. Go ahead, friends. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just like approach and sit next to Skrung. Can I help you? So when that cargo did go missing, was that you? No, not by these hands. That was purely on the orc side. I had nothing to do with it. And that's the story we're going to keep with. I'm <laughs> Fair enough. I, I, I tilt my head. Kind of knowingly. <laughs> can, I, can I try some insight, see if I think he's telling the truth? Go for it. Ten. All right, well... Even with this role, and with the amount that he has, you're able to tell that he's telling the truth. He had nothing to do with the cargo going missing. 
He was just <laughs> merely there. He to just loves talking suspiciously. Yeah, no, he was just, no, he was just there to start the distraction. He uh, he looks over at you. He knows that just by your look alone, your dumbfounded, like, little happy-go-lucky look, <laughs> that he's just like, oh, this fucker's reading me, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just staring into him, just right into the soul. <laughs> yep. Look, man, I, I, don't know, I don't know whether to believe anybody about anything, okay? <laughs> But I trust people. <laughs> but I trust people, and that's what makes you the most deceptive out of everyone. <laughs> I'm not used to dealing with anybody I haven't known my whole life, so this is weird, man. He says exactly what he's feeling. What am I supposed to do with that? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, Skrong is just, like, now looking at you. It's like, he, he, he looks like he has something on his breath about to, like, just let loose, <laughs> but he's not saying it right now. But you could, like... It's plain as day. He's got something he wants to say to add to that, but he's not going to, in the interest of keeping himself safe. Ah. You seem very tense. May I play you a soothing song? Must would, you? I mean, would that help? I don't know. Would it? I play him a soothing song. <laughs> Roll performance. 21. Well... He kind of just like harumps there. <laughs> he's just like tapping his foot to the song. And he's just like, I guess this is working. Oh, he loves it. He loves it. As uh, as Eloy's playing, I sit, lean back and I basically tell everybody in the group, I'm Wake, by the way. <laughs> I never introduced myself <laughs> once that entire last game. <laughs> that's okay. Red's also kind of, well, that's what everyone's kind of been calling her now, now that she's kind of sitting there with everyone. Yeah, she, was... she's keeping she's keeping to herself she kind of just like looks over to you and nods she's uh she's none too happy that she had to reveal herself like before she lost her hat during the scuffle of the fight uh she's a little frazzled she's just she's actually like making sure that no one comes near her belongings mm. uh she's that's kind of the reason why she was down here when you guys came into this she did have to explain to the guards you did overhear her say that she went down because she was very, very adamant about making sure no one got to her files. It was very important documentation. Hmm. And that's all she's willing to say to you. About that, anyway. Beyond that, she's very content with everyone just calling her Red. She's not... No one has asked her what her name is, but she's pretty okay with everyone just saying she's Red. Wake is totally fine with people trying to keep their privacy for their <laughs> own purposes. Yep. Totally understands it. But after fighting in combat with people he now sees as allies, he's more willing to open up to them. Right on. Risf is also, like, just going around, making rounds, making sure everyone's okay. And, like, he's offering, like, little charms and potions to those. But everyone's kind of just, like, now at this... Except for Pliskin, who's, like, Risf, just calm down. Everyone's fine. It's all fine. He's just, like, now jittering around, just, like, going, no, no, there must be something I must do to help someone. Uh, I go and I lay my arm on his shoulder. Relax, you almost died tonight. You're fine. This is not the first fight I've been in, though. I, I'm, I'm quite capable of making sure I'm okay with all sorts of things. The I believe you, but the best thing you can do right now is calm down. Listen to the, listen to the donkey song. <laughs> <laughs> Ezra hears this beautiful tune. And you just see the gears no. turning in his head. <laughs> What's on your mind then? Because now Pliskin's looking at you with the with the. He's like, "Well, Copper, for your thoughts, Eloy, I'm going to be honest with you. I, I would like that. <laughs> <laughs> I love performing and putting sh on shows on stages, and I feel you have a gift, my friend. Oh, thank you. Would you accompany me on my journeys around the world to show off your amazing talent? That is literal. There is literally nothing I would rather do right now. Then, sir, I would be. We can split the profits 50 50 on any show we do, and you will get a chance to see the world. That is all I want. Well, that's fantastic because that is exactly what I want to do with you, buddy. Scrong rolled the natural one. Never mind. He's not paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> he's off in his own world. Yeah, no, he's, he's, he's kind of just sitting there. He's still kind of like jittered by the fact that you're sitting next to him so close. He's just like, all right, this guy's got an angle. I know he does. He's got something on me. He's not saying this out loud, but you could tell he's looking at you just like, you have something in mind. I, for I me. feel it emanating off of him. Yes. Well, Eloy, I feel that this is the start of a beautiful friendship and partnership, and I would just like to welcome you aboard Ezra's Entertainers. <laughs> 
I just shake my head. <laughs> <laughs> Wake, you wouldn't happen to have any great, you know, showy talents, would you? Pliskin now looks to you. Yes, Wake, do you have any special showy talents that you'd like to show us? Now kind of sniding into this for fun. He's not doing this to be a dick. He's just like, yeah, let's, let's see something. Come on. No. <laughs> <laughs> Roll deception. Every flower Roll blooms Sunday, someday, Wake. This is charisma, right? Yeah. All right. Uh, let's, hold on. Let me just double check something real quick. That will be deception. Yes. Yeah, so. 19. 19. Pliskin's okay. He just, like, waves his hand <laughs> off like, I tried to fuck with you. <laughs> well, either way, you were a great help back there. If you wanted to just come along as some hired muscle, I would be happy to have you along. The guards outside start shouting there, you don't got a choice in that. We got something to do for you once we get to the island. Well, all right then. I guess I'm coming along anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it seems both of our career plans will be have to put on hold. Riss, for Riss a kind of like looks at the both of you and he notices that you're all like, "Oh, that's kind of a shock to hear that." Uh, trust me, uh, Mr. Mead will be very nice to you for what you've done. Mm hmm. He, he will be actually very grateful for the fact that you didn't slay the orc. He's actually very keen on making sure that we take captives alive. Look, speaking of him, does this ship have a brig and can I visit it? I don't think they want us out, unfortunately, this kind of... Um, what would you call it, Pliskin? It's an interrogation room. It's an interrogation room. Ah, great. But the fact that you've done a great service for the people of Jahal Cove, especially for making sure the last cargo ship going in, I'm sure they'll be very grateful, and they, they, they won't treat you as badly as they normally do for those. No, I understand how it is. Do a little bit of good. Get a little bit of punishment. <laughs> I lean, I lean back on a cot and just kind of, like, rest my hat over my eyes. Pliskin kind of just, like, sits there and smiles. Do you think getting gold for taking in a wanted criminal is punishment? I think being imprisoned in a room not allowed being walk around anywhere. That's its own form of punishment. I just kind of... Is there a window in this room? Yes, you can see outside. <laughs> I stare outside. <laughs> <laughs> Wistfully. <laughs> My, a great my cover you, can art cut, image. you can cut this wrist with a knife. <laughs> <laughs> it's tangible, but you loyal, my friend. Yeah, my wrist is out there. <laughs> All right, so does anyone, everyone to see. Does anyone want to do anything else before we uh, keep going? Mm. No one you want to talk to in specific, uh, specifically or whatnot? I'm going to go talk to Red. To Red? Yes. All righty. Red notices you take a little meander over towards her. She like just leans her head up and she looks at you. Yes. You were a lot of help the other day in that fight, or last night, or earlier today, whenever this is. <laughs> earlier uh, today works. Earlier today. You were a lot of help. Uh, I noticed you wielded some very powerful magic. That's not super common around here, especially if you're non-Navy, as far as I know. No, and I really would have wished I kept it to a minimum. Well, hey, your secret's safe with me. I won't tell, you, tell anyone anything. I'm just curious about what you found yourself doing on this ship. I just wanted passage, nothing more. I wanted to get away from the mainland. Okay. I'm going to try and look into that. Uh, are you going to... Uh, so you want to... You, you obviously can tell that... You don't need to roll insight okay. to tell that she obviously is hiding yeah, something. Just, it's, it's being it's, dodgy. It's completely out there that she's hiding something. But if you can convince her otherwise by telling me something now, I might give you an advantage roll on diplomacy. Okay. Well, I'm just going to throw like uh, I'm just going to throw out Red that your reasons for leaving are none of my business. However, if you being here is a danger to anyone else, I would really appreciate knowing. As okay. it is someone after you. Oh, very well. Well, then after we convince uh, after we mince words, why don't you tell me why you're here? I'm traveling around looking for new players in my soon-to-be uh, entertainment troupe. I think I've found one. Roll diplom Roll deception. I'm being honest. T.T. Barnum over here. <laughs> Eight, uh, which plus my charisma, uh, 11. Okay, that's very nice. But at the same time, what else is there in mind for you? She can read you. Okay. Look, let's just say I need to find somebody. And to do that, I need a lot of money. And one of my favorite things to do is to entertain. I figure this would be a nice, honest way to do this without hurting someone else while gaining the money I need. I'll tell you what. Once all this is over with, I'm sure we're going to have to end up sharing lodgings. I can already tell that 
Meade is a fellow who wants to make sure all of his assets are put in place and kept very close. Find me afterwards. I may help you with that, if I feel like I can take on a side job. Thank you for your help. She, and uh, your, now to answer your question. She, uh, your question was that you wanted to know yeah. why she was here. Well, it's no doubt that everyone on the ship knows that I cast magic. I work in espionage. And I'm currently lying low from a recent job. That's about as much as I'm willing to say. Any idea on if this job knows where you are? Well, I'm hoping that Mead will be able to keep his mouth shut about that. She seems very well knowledgeable about this Mead character. In fact, everyone... <laughs> kind of picking up on yeah, that. Yeah, everyone here kind of knows <laughs> who Mead is. It's kind of like weird. we're the only people that have been here before. I was say, it's weird. It's like we're on some no, cursed red, cruise red, that everyone you know, knows. No, she can see that. And Red actually goes... I can see the look on your face. You don't know who Meat is. I figured this one wouldn't. I got no idea. I've only been traveling and making kind of short trips around the around the local area. Meat is not a name I'm super familiar with. I've been hunting around the pirate underworld. Do I know anything? Yeah, you should roll knowledge with advantage. Knowledge with advantage. Well, uh, my advantage gives me a nine. So, if anything, I've heard vagaries. You've heard vagaries of a... What you think might have been a pirate lord. Okay. You might have heard something about a pirate lord of the same name, but you're not sure if it's just Bumpkiss or not. I don't know enough, so I'm just going to sit there and listen. All right. <laughs> just sit there, fiddling with my whetstone, just trying to resharp, rehone my spear. Yes, uh, Rip Pliskin kind of just sits there and smirks, seeing at you three. He's just like, wow, you guys really don't get around that much, do you? I know you don't, especially. <laughs> you're about to meet a pirate lord. Oh. One of the nicest ones, I might add. Well, that's fortunate. So, don't worry. He won't uh, kill you. He'll just lay some hurt down on you. Why would he want to do that to Eli? He wouldn't. You don't have much. I'm sure he wouldn't. I'm sure. I'm sure. Just don't say something stupid. No promises. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I guess we can skip over that. <laughs> so it is now, you guys Just all get Patty your... Patty on the shoulder. Don't worry, <laughs> I can do most of the talking. <laughs> you guys pretty much get, like, your good night's sleep. You, the the boat ride is very uneventful. They let you they let you sleep un, uh, rested. You, uh, you get up to the sound of a bell as you now look outside, and there is a giant cliffside. It's like a giant, it's like a sort of, like, crescent moon the shape of the isle that you're going into right now you're going into the bay where there's a town that just circles around the crescent moon and in the middle it reaches up into a top hill that like overlooks it so it makes like a sort of cavern almost like the mouth of a skull okay and you can clearly see from coming up on the top of the ship that if you look on the top there's a manor a very very illustrious looking manor on top of that of that cliffside looking down So, and also, if you look inside the wall, you'll notice that there's crevices for all sorts of cannon fire coming out. There are little cannons that just cover the entire inside of the wall where the, uh, side of the, the, yeah, I'm sorry, the cliffside is. Getting the impression this is kind of a stronghold. <laughs> You're getting the impression. It is a township. Okay. But it's it to be fortified thing. in some way, shape, yeah. or form. Yep. So, you guys are now set, uh, you're not set free, you got a couple of guards just like saying, Alright, gentlemen, can you please come with us this way, we'll take you, uh, we'll take you to go see Mead. I want my boat taken care of, I say on my way out. Oh, that's fine, we'll actually have someone take care of that. Ah, here he comes now. You start hearing the thumping of something very large, you feel the rattle of the ship. <laughs> uh, not the ship, I'm sorry, not the rattle of the ship, you're on the boardwalk right now. Okay. You feel the rattle of the wood. As you notice, a very lumbering man, probably about nine feet tall and super wide. Getting past him is going to be kind of difficult without, like, kind of squirming by. This is an ogre. He's kind of got bi- he's got really tiny bifocals. He's got a giant- he's using a stump as a cane, but he doesn't look like anything part of his legs are broken. He just looks fat. And, uh, he's got a giant tusk on one side coming out this way. All right. Ah, uh, Timothy, yes. It's, uh, 
Nice of you to come by. So, uh, did Mead send you? Yes, Mead sent me to come here to help all you nice people for taking care of the captain. Ah, good. Uh, this fine gentleman here has a boat we'd like to have uh, at least sent to the carve house. Could you do that for us? Yes, please. I'll, I'll take that boat and make sure it goes to the carve house. Very nice for you. He takes his giant finger and presses it against your cheek. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome, Mr. Nice Man. Actually, I want you to roll me acrobatics because that finger almost pushed the hat off. Oh, God. Acrobatics, okay. I've lost my cat's grace because I slept, I'm guessing. Yes. All right. Acrobatics I do have. I'm oh, sorry. You want me to roll? Yeah, roll in there, one? please. Uh, 15 plus six, 21. You take it like a champ, and you just take the <laughs> finger, like, to the front of your face, <laughs> so the hat doesn't come off, but so you're just like, Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> he turns and looks at you. <laughs> Hi! You are just the biggest man I ever did see. He slams his giant hand down to pet you. <laughs> All right, so we have an ogre and a talking donkey. I'm just throwing that out there right now. <laughs> yeah. Somebody, wa oh, I'm sorry, I kind of stubbed my toe there for a second. Somebody once told me that you might be what's known as a, an ass. That that is right. I am an asinine centaur. I like you, horse man. Thank you. I like you too. This natural charm gets to everyone. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes me feel so safe knowing there's somebody so big and nice just close by. I need you to roll me an acrobatics check because he is too big <laughs> and he is going to push you off the side of the fucking boardwalk if you don't make a right move. Uh, 11. Oh, that's so nice. You fucking plunge into the water as he meanders his way <laughs> in to get the boat. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. I know you didn't mean nothing by it. <laughs> oh, I'd boy. Try to clamber back up onto the boardwalk. Yeah, they, they help you up. Like, you're, you're so yeah. close to the shore that it doesn't matter. <laughs> so after you get up and dry yourself off, uh, a couple of the townsfolk have taken notice of the fact that you guys have landed, and they're all eyeing you pretty warily right now. One of the old ladies who's, like, standing there also just, like, just looks at you and then looks to him and then looks to Ezra and then looks to Risf and she's, like, she has a little bit of a sigh, but then she, like, hobbles over, like, kind of just, like, waddles her way over to Risf. This is the last boat? Aye, ma'am, this, this will be the last boat for quite some time. And you only brought this? Well, it's unfortunately the captain's doing. Oh, yes! Of course it is! The captain knows all, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, pull the strings to get this lot to come here. What do you even do? I'll, I'll play my flute. Oh, God. I'm, I'm real good. He says I have a gift. Ma'am, he is terrific. I feel like just by listening to this person, I can smell them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to, real quick, uh, roll perception just to, like, look around and get, get my bearings, see if there's anything that uh, jumps out at me. Go for it. Shit. <laughs> I get a six. A six? Yeah. Uh, there is a large crowd gathering around you. Haldok, the captain, actually kind of like hobbled his way down, and now he's like pulling his cane like, back! Back, all of you! He's, and everyone parts ways. He's <laughs> like, you idiots! We gotta go see the captain! And Miss Hollywagon, are you talking shit about the captain? Oh no, of course not. I just happen to think he's a blittering idiot. I think that counts as talking shit. <laughs> no, that's, that's... He, 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 he turns to look at you. No, that's just her. She has quite a big case of dementia. Oh. That, isn't that right? Today's pumpkin soup! That's right, ma'am. It's pumpkin soup. Last night it was seagull. <laughs> what?! <laughs> Shh! That was a secret, Wyke! <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is You, you hear Grammy from outside? You tell Secret? No! <laughs> Good! <laughs> she like she pops her head out from a window. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Those chains are really long. <laughs> we unshackled. Like the guard the guard just the captain. We unshackled Grammy. Yeah, the, 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 the captain like turns. When we when we dock port, we unshackle her just to give her her sea leg. She doesn't leave the ship though. <laughs> I'm free! <laughs> Not until we set sail, Grammy. 
Crimey! <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> okay, so Haddock kind of like hobbles his way in front. The guards are making sure you get some safe passage. This town doesn't look half bad. It's it's a very it's a naval port, so there's a bunch of like shops and trade goods. You're actually walking through the bazaar right now. There's a bunch of an odd eclectic like group of folk. You you notice there's a couple of rat folk somewhere. There's some kobolds around. There's a there are a couple of orcs as well, but mostly this town is like just filled to burst with human beings. Good so to know it's a monster town at least. Yeah, <laughs> they, they, they they don't allow ra- they are accepting of other races. For the most part, yes, cat the captain says to you. We're uh we allow others to take port here. We don't really shy away. We're not like uh we're not like a few ports that kind of shy away from certain kind of folk coming in. Oh, I'm familiar. <laughs> The captain looks to you. If he hasn't seen the blackness of my eyes when I was staring directly at him on the ship. <laughs> yeah, he's going to roll insight on you. Never mind, he rolls an eight. He's just like... <laughs> he doesn't know what I am, but he... He, he, kinda, he just looks at you, he's just like... You have your reasons, but that'll be taken care of. Don't you worry. That facade of yours ain't going to last long unless you want to talk to the captain proper. <sighs> I say, just basically preparing myself for the inevitability. Good. The more transparent you are with the captain, the better this will be for everyone. I just kind of look forward. That goes to you, too. He looks to Skrung. Skrung is the only one who has handcuffs on him. (laughs) Yeah. I don't question it, (laughs) necessarily. (laughs) Oh, and also, he's got, like, you know, like, those little toddler straps? Oh, God, he's like, like <laughs> yeah, a he's, leash. He's kind of like, he's, le- he's leashed by one of the guards right now. <laughs> Just like, oh, gee, thanks. I mean, you're a slippery little guy. <laughs> <laughs> I like that none of us have any sort of uh, you I, know, problem with I wish with you this. were dead right now. <laughs> well, if I were, you'd be. You see him, like, kind of, like, lurch his way <laughs> forward, and the guard just pulls him back. Ah! Easy, Skrung. Everybody knows you need to pull that leash to keep the dog under wraps. It's fine. Just calm down. You're dead first! (laughs) He's so cute this time of year. (laughs) I'm glad we... uh, I'm glad we're friends, Skrung, I say as I continue walking. (laughs) Oh, God. All right, so you're taking up the cliffside. Can't wait for Skrung to be the real villain of this campaign. (laughs) (laughs) All right, you're taking up the cliffside. Uh, it's a very lush forest. There's a bunch of, like, parrots just all sitting there squawking at you as you go up. Uh, you head up. To your, it takes, like, a probably a good half hour for you guys to ascend all the way to the top, and now you reach the outskirts of the manor. Mm-hmm. Uh, you can start telling that here be pirates because there's, like, two or three guys just sitting outside, like, the railings of this really illustrious-looking manor. <laughs> hey, Haddock! I wave and just, gentlemen! Like, you know, just a friendly receiving of, the, of their greeting. Hey! I'm glad you had to roll for that. Toast <laughs> to you, man! Right on, fella. <laughs> Gabbins? Header? Hey, Captain. What's, what's shaking? Uh, is Mead in? Yeah, he's, he's up in the... T- he's t- t- there. He's there. I nudge Eloy. Looks like they've had a bit of meat already. <laughs> I don't know what meat We is. make that joke all the time. It always comes uh, after Moses' law for saying it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what Moses' law is, horse boy? I, 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 am, a, I am a donkey boy, and no, I do not, sir. <laughs> you ain't gonna last long. Don't listen to them, Eloy. You're great. <laughs> he heads E. Everyone goes inside. You notice that, like, there's just, like, a rabble. Like, so you remember that Tortuga scene where everyone's in the bar? And mm-hmm. everyone's, like, there's a couple of dudes fighting off to the side. There's people drinking. Everyone's just having a grand old time. There's music playing in the back. There, there's, like, dudes with, like, on, on a church organ and, like, an accordion just going ham at it. Just looks like a <laughs> fucking grand old time if you were a pirate. Right. This is This is all that's happening right now. <laughs> everyone's kind of wearing the same, like dark brownish uniform like their their uniforms aren't exactly the same but the coloration is is there this is a crew this is like 
a huge crew going on right now. You're looking at a room of like a giant dining hall ta uh, dining table with like probably 30 to 40 people inside. All right, don't start a fight. No, then no, no. Everyone kind of just stops deadpan, and looks to you, but then notice that Haddock's there, and he's like, "Ah, oh, okay, this is the new. This, this is good. Okay, now we can finally lift this goddamn lockdown." I lean over to Haddock. What lockdown? <laughs> well, remember everyone saying that you're the last ship. Yeah, that's the case. You're the last ship coming into this port. Oh. Not the last ship leaving, I'm hoping. <laughs> That's what we're here to talk about. Oh, good. <laughs> All right, so you guys are taken to a balcony upstairs, and you knock. Uh, Haddock knocks on the door, leans in. Captain, you ready? I send him in. The door opens wide, and you see that there's a very, very regal-looking gentleman in a very nice hat sitting at the table looking you all down as you walk in. But boom here's your boy. Ooh. Yeah, I like, I like his hat. <laughs> Good. This... <laughs> is Mr. Mead himself. The captain. The captain himself. So, everyone now is standing in a row. But then me kind of just looks to each other and just goes, oh, this won't do. He, like, starts pulling out bottles of whiskey and rum. It's like, this won't do at all. This won't do at all. Like, Gibbons, get some goddamn seats for our guests, please. Oh, Except, ex <laughs> shit, I don't know what I'm going to do with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm fine standing, sir. I, I'm just happy to be included. <laughs> he, like, he, like, raises his eyebrow. All right, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't seen one of you in Lord knows how long. Dude, Especially not with... Is that Donk? You know what? It's fine. We'll talk about this later. <laughs> so, the governor... The governor, yeah, he calls himself that because everyone's kind of like calling <laughs> huh? either captain or governor. So... Scrung, then he looks over to Scrung and he goes, Haddock, is this the one that you were talking about? Aye, sir. This is, uh... This is one of the conspirators. Get him a chair, too, but keep him on the leash. Oh, gee, thanks! <laughs> Make sure it's a high chair. I say looking at him. <laughs> <laughs> he just, like, goes like this. <laughs> Has Gibbons come by with my chair yet? Because if he did, I thanked him. Yeah, everyone, <laughs> you go all get chairs. <laughs> Mead, Mead kind of, like, looks to every single one of you and offers a drink. You wanna you wanna sit on my back, Scrung? <laughs> have have a little ride on my back? If that cheer you up, Scrung? <laughs> he like, Eloy, I don't think you're helping right now. Oh. Scrung looks for like the nearest thing on the table or something. He like he sees like there's a small book. <laughs> <laughs> Throws it at you, but it, it, no avail because his hands are cuffed. Oh. <laughs> don't worry, Eloy. He just doesn't isn't very good at ex, you know expressing his feelings, <laughs> or he's too good. <laughs> I know most of you here know who uh, I am, but for those who don't know or may not, th these are some new faces. Uh, Red is kind of just like I know who you are. I've read the stories, I've seen the naval charters for the man known as Jacob Self. Ah, then you know the full name then, Lass. That's very good. Although, I'd like to know who you all are, and what exactly happened on the ship. Well. Oh, by the way, lad, uh, please, do us a favor. Take off the hat. Let's see your face. I undo my bandana in the back. I kind of look down. I take off the hat and reveal my face, basically. <laughs> ah, merfolk. There's plenty of you out in the docks, so I'm sure you'll find some people around here to at least converse with. But I would, uh, I would ask that you try not to escape the island. We're currently on lockdown, if you haven't heard. I've heard that in passing. I'm sure you'll tell us why in a moment. I'm assuming that's why we're here. Of course, of course. But like I said, I'd like to be introduced to you all very quickly. Well, you won't find it in the registry, but my name's Wake. <sighs> I'm traveling for 
my own reasons, but on that ship, basically at night, there was a commotion, some merchandise went missing, and then we were boarded by orcs. I don't know in what order particularly that happened, but the merchandise went missing and the orcs came on, or if orcs had already been on, and then the merchandise went missing. No, not exactly. The merchandise didn't go quite missing. In fact, I hear you did a little bit of poking around, and you saw the merchandise yourself. Well, I noticed a cadaver. And Couldn't... there's our merchandise. Ah, well. I also noticed that there's something... I heard reports that there's also something inside the cadaver that was taken out. Ezra just kind of leans over, interested in how the response is going to go. <laughs> Doesn't say anything, just... Hmm. Do you know what it was? I. I'd like everyone to be acquainted with what it is. That, that's good, because I have no fucking clue what that thing was. Yeah, I'm pretty curious. God myself. damn it, Eloy. <laughs> <laughs> I reach into my, uh, basically, inner pocket and pull out the jar, and I set it on the table. I just look over at Wake. I love this guy. I found this inside. I... How did you remove it? I just pulled it out. It felt He'll... weird. He but... looks at you with a cocked brow at you just removed it with your hand. <laughs> Tell me, did you feel anything strange about touching it? I felt... Apart from the fact that you went poking in a Goliath's corpse? I mean, aside from the oddness of the act itself I had to touch it twice and the first time I just thought it was this feeling of you know ew I'm grabbing something gross out of a goliath but then the second time uh, let's see what would I have to roll to kind of describe the feeling better that would be a I'll just give you a straight wisdom check for that okay uh, that'd be a 12 you explain to the captain that upon touching it you felt this weird sense of something trying to come from you. Okay, so like you, I, you I felt, like, I felt, I felt yeah. like something was trying to leave me, like something was being pulled in, but I don't know. I just kind of shook it off and shoved it in a jar. Well, this is going to be a little difficult to send off to Rattles now, considering that the corpse was very much needed, but now that you removed the whole catalyst of the thing. We're going to have to think about this a little bit further now. What is it? Oh, I may as well tell you this, considering that we're all friends here, yes? As he says that <laughs> all the guards in the back of the room, like, vi all the guards, everyone in this entire place, all the pirates that you've seen, they all had a visible pistol and cutlass at the ready. And you, and you notice, like, everyone in the back stand at attention and just go for the pistol. Yes, yes, we are all friends here. I, I am friends. He is my friend. I'm his friend, and if he's your friend, then I'm your friend, too. I would like us all to be friends. Scrum goes, well, how much are you looking to spend? <laughs> yes, I love mandatory friendships. Mandatory friendships are the best sort of friendships. Great <laughs> on building a relationship. I like I mandatory say not really, friendships. I say not really blinking. I like friendships with women's. <laughs> Red looks at you just like, excuse me? <laughs> yeah, like lady folk, man folk. It can be mandatory, it can be lady tutorial, whatever kind of friendship. Ah, yes, you're just an idiot. Don't worry about it. <laughs> All right. One guy just, like, kind of meanders up to Skrung, takes his pistol. <laughs> back of the head. <laughs> Do we have a problem here, Mr. Skrung? The fact that I'm bleeding out the side of my head now, everything else is peachy. Ah, good, then we're all friends here. I would like to at least speak in a little defense of Mr. Skrung, whatever his... Wherever his guilt may lie, he did assist us in apprehending the captain. Mr. Scrung, is this true? He's like rubbing the back of his head on the on the chair. <laughs> just like, like, mm, <laughs> like as a big fuck. Like, it's kind of like a fuck you, I'm getting blood on your chair. May, but, may I put a bandage on Mr. Scrung? Riss kind of like puts his hand up like, me too. <laughs> Riss, whoever, what's your name, son? Hi, I'm Eloy. And you? I am Ezra. Leave him be for now. You can tend to that later. Oh. We have a little bit of, dis of discussion to have here. Well, 
Mr. Wake, now that you have shed a little bit of light on that scenario, Mr. Scrung, how do you plead on that? Yeah, it was kind of part of a deal that went wrong. Didn't know that you were going to play doctor with a dead corpse. I thought that wasn't your style, Mead. No. No, it is not my style. It is not my style to make a man dead. I'm not here to take a man's life. I am here in, uh, in a little bit of an experiment. A science experiment, I might add. Tell me, um, anyone here, what do you know of the Abyssal? All of you roll me knowledge checks. Can I roll with advantage since I come from the ocean? Yes. Four! Uh, that's knowledge or intelligence, right? Yes, that's knowledge. That's, anyway. uh, 20. Five. You know full well what the Abyssal is. You know that they come from the, de uh, whatever the Abyssal is, it's some kind of necrotic energy that comes from the depths that amalgamates the dead corpses with that of the souls that have died in the ocean. I, ex I expunge that and question if that has anything to do with the tumor I ripped out. Indeed. Oh, good. I start wiping my hand up more on my side. <laughs> well, so long as you don't touch it again, son, I don't think the effects will happen to you anymore. Coming in contact with the Abyssal is not something I would recommend. That's why we're going to be handing it off to one of our top men on my team. But in any case, the reason for the lockdown is there's an uprising somewhere on the island. They're coming from somewhere, and we don't know where. That's why we have the body, and that's why we have the tumor. We're going to perform a little bit of arcanic surgery to try and find the source and stop it, or at least close it off, one or the other. But we have reason to believe that someone on the island is starting to open rifts for the Abyssal to come out. A couple of days ago, we've unfortunately come to a sad state of affairs where a woman's child was devoured by an Abyssal shark. We don't know how many of them are actually out in the ocean right now, and I would rather we keep casualties to a minimum. That's why the lockdown is in place. No one gets off this island until we clean it. And I'm assuming that's why we're here. No, you were just innocent bystanders, but the fact that you were this close to the action, we should keep you arrested for conspiracy. We do happen to see that there is someone on your ship that knows how to use magic that we don't have documented. Everyone looks to Red. <laughs> For all we know, she could be a naval spy. A spy I am, Captain. Naval I am not. Unfortunately, we don't know that, Miss... He looks at a piece of paper. Hmm. Seems your name's not on this list. The folks have been used to calling me Red, and I'd like to keep it that way. Well, that doesn't really help your case last, now does it? But, there is something you could do for me. I am willing to reward you all for taking in the Orc Captain, and Skrung here, in that matter. I am willing to reward you for this, for bringing him in alive. But... How would you like to prove your innocence to me? Do I have to beat up another orc captain? No, 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 of course not. You will have to help me, assist me in a small errand. We're gathering our information right now, but we think we may have a lead as to who the conspirator is and who is summoning the abyssal on this island. However, we can't locate them, and there have been stirrings that a naval ship has somehow snuck into port. Not here, obviously. There are many ports to Jahal Cove, especially to the north and to the south. But I'd rather we keep this covert and in a small group, especially with folks that have no connection to the island. So how about it, gentlemen? Will you assist me in finding the conspirator? It will clear your names, and you will be handsomely rewarded for your efforts. You look like you have something to say, <laughs> Mr. Ezra. This just seems like awfully dangerous work to be thrusting on some strangers who were just riding a boat. Yes. But, um, based on this report, you all seem very capable in handling yourself with a well-known 
privateer who surfs the island taking off cargo ships. So that's already been proven that you know how to handle yourself. Well, I don't speak for the group here, but this seems like a pretty major decision that I feel like we might need to discuss before we come to well, a concrete decision. it's quite all right, because I have set up lodging for you all. You will all be staying at an inn run by a few of my crewmates. It's called the Flappy Stingray. Very lovely name. <laughs> I knew I'd get a <laughs> chuckle out of every single one of you for saying that. It's a fun name. It's a fun name indeed. I had fun writing it. <laughs> you will be staying at the Flappy Stingray. We'll give you all 24 hours, and then you could speak to our uh, to my man who actually lives there. His wife, Mary Pibbs, and her husband, Harros Pibbs. You can't miss him. He's a very large fellow. He's a very different fellow. You will be speaking to him about this, and he will be giving you information as it trickles in. But for your efforts... He snaps his fingers, and you see, like, a bunch of the guards come by and hand every single one of you a bag of 500 gold. For bringing in the orc captain. Hmm. What's to become of that, captain? Interrogation. We don't kill here on this island. Jahal Cove has a very strict no-kill policy as it's more useful to gain information from those who haven't passed away. And it's rather ugly to stain your hands with blood. Also the back of your chair, Skrung. I Can I bandage him? That is really bothering me. <sighs> Do as you wish. Thank you. I pull out my healing kit and uh, wrap some bandages around his head. Roll medicine. Also, I'm going to roll for acrobatics from Scrum because he's squirming about. Oh, jeez. That's a bad roll. I got a six. That's okay. I rolled a five. No. <laughs> it's a fucking scene. It, like, it's like two seconds it's away. Blood going everywhere. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> like, there's now blood all over you as he's trying to, like, wiggle himself. Like, I don't fucking need your help. God damn it. <laughs> but you get the bandage on him and Just... you, 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 you now look like you look like a serial killer at this point with that dumb <laughs> smile on your face. I did it. <laughs> I look. I look at the uh, governor. The gold is appreciated, but you seem like a knowledgeable sort of these seas. I. I've traveled them. I've been at this pirate game for. Oh, I don't know. He starts counting on his fingers. Coming close to a decade. In that time, have you ever come across a pirate with glowing eyes? Yes, quite often, actually. Where can I find him? You'll have to be a little bit more specific than that, son. I've known quite a few who actually have this little trait of yours. And I have a few names I could give you. How about this? Help me with the Abyssal and I'll give you a name. Fine. Very well, we have an accord. You, you are actually quite easy when it comes to parlaying, Mr. Wake. <laughs> Apparently. As long as we each have something, as long as we each have something to offer, I imagine I'll stay that way. Well, you're more than welcome to, as I said before, we're not going to give you the information just quite yet. We're still having our man, Mr. Harros, do a little bit more digging. However, I will welcome you all while you have your stay here. For the next 24 hours, enjoy Jahal Cove and its leisure. Hmm. You may not leave the town, however, it is open for you, and most will welcome you with open arms. It's fair trade. Well, I thank you kindly for that, Governor. This will be very helpful. Please, son, call me Mead. Of course, Mead. What's to become of Scrung here? You know, I have... He, like, strokes his beard. You know, I haven't quite thought of that. You say that while he was the reason why the orcs came upon the ship, he did assist you in taking them down? Yes. He shot him with a gun. A gun, you say? What, and it wouldn't happen to be this gun. He pulls out the pistol. As he's now inspecting it, there looks like there's some bits of tech inside the revolving chamber of the flintlock. This was not how the gun was originally supposed to be made. This looks like it was, ta hang uh, it was tankered with. 
Yeah, that's the one. Hmm. Rather impressive craftsmanship, Mr. Skrung. Very impressive indeed. I have a few crew members on this island who have a hand in crafting weapons and armor. They'd be very interested in something like this. How about this? It's not like you can get off the island with one of my men knowing. Would you like to join the effort in clearing your name? Do I have much of a choice? No, not really. Well, what the hell, I got nowhere else to go now. Very good. Oh, by the way, uh, Mr. Skrung, I, I will ask that you make sure that you do this proper. Or we will. He actually, like, flips through a, do uh, like a dossier of just, like, names and stuff. He, like, fi he, like, scratches his beard a little bit, looks at there. Hmm. Drix. Stop! Okay, okay, I will help. Very good. All right, well, do any of you have any more questions before I set you free on my little island? Can Skrung keep the leash? <laughs> Just asking. <laughs> Mr. Skrung, you know my policy when it comes to murder, right? Does that mean breaking bones? No, that does not mean breaking bones. I can agree with that. That's fine. He <laughs> Mead snaps his fingers, and one of the guards come by with the key and unlock him. Roll acrobatics. As he fucking leaps from the chair at you. <laughs> uh, 17. You nimbly just lean your head <laughs> over as he fucking crashes his face into a globe. <laughs> ah! Oh, Skrung, I only got so many of these bandages, man. <laughs> well, I suggest you all head on over to the Flappy Stingray unless you would like someone to escort you there. I suppose we'll be watched no matter where we go anyway. Very good. Um, by the by, let's keep discussions about the Abyssal to a minimum. Only those with some extensive knowledge should know about that. Most of the townsfolk don't quite know about the lockdown too well. And I'd like to keep it that way so there's not a big panic. Fair enough. Now you see, Eloy, you kind of have to lie about this, but it makes other people feel safer, so you're actually doing them a favor. Oh, oh. A white lie, Mr. Eloy, a white lie. <laughs> a lie I'll, of a mission. I'll, I'll try real hard. Here's the thing. It's not that you don't have to lie directly. Oh, no, Just he has to. Don't mention you, it. No, Mead looks, looks at you. Oh, no, he has to. As the guards now, like, <laughs> go for the flintlocks again. You have to try really hard, Mr. Eloy. I, I will try very, very hard, sir. Very good. They all release their hands from the guns. <laughs> Eloy, anytime you feel like you have to talk about it, just give me a little tap on the shoulder and tell them I do most of the talking. Okay. All right. Uh, that sounds do, easier. All right. Do we mind if we take a quick recess right here? Yeah, Absolutely. sure. Absolutely. We're about no an hour in. Yep. Cool. And as is the case, we always take about a five or so minute break every hour on this stream to give some bitch shout outs and thank everybody for joining us. We'll be right back after these messages. Woo. <laughs> Welcome hey, back to the back. table, everybody. We're back, and we are heading to the Flappy Stingray. Yes. Woo! I love that the moment you said that, there was a giant smile on your face. It's, the, it's a fun name. <laughs> Wade can't help but smile as he sees the stupid little logo above the Stingray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of thought, like, the Stingray. It's literally, like, the Stingray just like this. Like... Like, just before full flap, and right next to the other flap is, like, the little mug of beer. Like, does it, does it have, like, a stupid smile on his face? Just... No, no, it's it's a realistic stingray. Ah, uh, realistic stingray. It's a realistic okay. stingray, but, like, his little fin at the very tip is around the edge of the mug. Ah, okay, I'll dig it. Alrighty, and uh, I apologize to everyone for doing the whole, uh, not uh, naming off which character's <laughs> talking. I will try to be more, uh adamant about that for it's, clarity yeah it's, yeah it's a process I, I think you do it but you do it kind of in passing like i notice when you're doing it, like i i i kind of follow who's talking but yeah but i'll, I'll be more i'll be more cognizant of it gotcha all right so you guys are going to head off to the flappy stingray yes yes yep. Yep. all right from what you uh from what you can tell it looks like a pretty nice place uh it took you about another half hour to get down from uh the manor itself and you walk through town as it's like midday, going close to night after all the time that's went by. 
it'd be nice to like just actually sleep in a real bed, maybe get some decent food that's not made out of the contents of a creature that might or may be a rat with wings. <laughs> Here in the distance. (laughs) Grammy can't leave the ship, but she's there in spirit. Still going with the idea that it was actually love. Grammy is forever with us. Yes. In our stomachs. Just a little piece of her somewhere. (laughs) You too, child. It won't be fully digested for another seven years. (laughs) (laughs) All right, so... You guys are at the front of the location. It's got, like, three floors. This place looks like the central hub of, like, when people just get off the ship and they need a place to stay, it's right here. Uh, you hear some noise bustling inside. The lights are the lights by candlelight are on. There's a little bit of, like, a guy on a violin strumming in there. Uh, if you haven't gone inside yet, you're just outside. The guards just, like, look at you and just step to the side. Like, they're no, they know you're just going to go inside. But everyone's with you, especially, like, Scrung, uh, Red. Riss and Plinkett, on the other hand, kind of, like, go their own separate way after walking into town. They've kind of, like, been here for quite some time that the guards aren't, like, o- are, are pretty okay with them just doing whatever they want. Mm-hmm. So they bid you adieu, and they'll see you, uh, they'll see you tomorrow when Harrows has some more information. Okay. They're going to go off and do their own thing. Uh, so Red and Scrung are now standing there with you just like, Good. Good. Scrung is just not happy with any of this. Ah, <laughs> uh, lighten up, Scrung. Could have been a lot worse. How could it have been any worse? They could have thrown you in a brig. Roll me an acrobatics check. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, what's that, a 13? You watch as a body flies through the window and lands on top of you. <laughs> Th- this is how it could get worse. Now there is... Is... Is this body alive? <laughs> yeah, you just hear you just hear a man go. <laughs> uh, just a dude, uh, a regular human, like it's a human guy, like it's just in an outfit. He just like gets thrown through the window as this hulking large man in a very fashionable suit, like oh tosses the guy through the window. He's like, <laughs> just like next time when you want to roll, don't cheat. <laughs> Ah, hello everyone. Don't mind uh, that little mishap there. We'll clean this up by tomorrow. This is quite common around here. Please come inside. I walk up. Hi there, sir. My name is Ezra Lockwood. These are my friends Eloy, Wake, Scrung, and Red. Ah, so you're the boys that Mead sent in, right? That would be Honey, us. Honey, they came. We got the guests up. Mary looks to the rest of you and just goes, All right, well, the rest of you will be easy. Getting this one a room is not going to be that great. Mary, don't don't be whiny about it. Haros, <laughs> the, the gentleman right there. You assume that's Haros because then Mary just goes, All right, Haros, I'll go set it up. If oh, they, assume he's that about, that about confirms it. Yep. <laughs> Got it. Oh, no, photo, ladies photo, please. <laughs> I, there we go. I do, I do not need anything special. Just a pile of hay in the corner. That is totally fine. Two-legger beds do not work out well for me, so just I'm not good to them. They're not good to me. It's best if we just keep apart. Wake doesn't know if that means to eat or to lay on. <laughs> yes. That's what Harris okay. was going to ask. <laughs> okay. Harris was just like, I'm with this one. What do, you, do you eat it or do you sleep on it? Yes, both. Yes. Right. I got three stomachs, man. I can eat all kinds of stuff. Okay, I don't know if that's true or not, but we'll get you something. Don't worry. <laughs> all right. So come on inside. He ushers you in. He gets you to a table while everyone, like, Mary's off getting all the accoutrements ready for you guys to have your own rooms. As this is happening, am I noticing any sort of, like, is there any sort of live performance or music or anything? Or yes. Or is this? Okay. Uh, you look off into the corner. There's a gentleman with a violin just strumming on it and a guy on percussion just kind of just like banging away two uh two humans just having just, at it just making music yeah Got just it. making music it's not it's competent it's enough to make like really mellow background music All right. like no one's like really dancing or doing a jig everyone else is kind of like sitting at a really large looking craps table though okay like that looks especially for a huge person <laughs> to sit along the side you kind of gander that just by looking at it that might be where Harros was sitting being it was so close to the window. <laughs> Before he chucked that one patron out. Yes. All right, so 
What are we doing here? Food, drink, what? Me told me about what you guys are up to. I don't have much for you, but like I said, we're willing to give you some rooms. We're willing to give you some rooms, willing to give you some food. Whatever information I could find, I'll probably give to you by tomorrow. I'm a little too busy, points over to the craps table, at this point to be too ass to care about making sure you guys are off on your merry way. So that means you get to go play about the port as much as you see fit. Just don't leave. It'll make my job a lot easier. He kind of like puts a finger up to the cigar in his mouth. <laughs> A lot easier. Did he just inhale a cigar? Yes. You actually, you actually watch as the cigar dips all the way to the butt, and he just flicks it away. One pull. One pull. Jeez. Haros is a big man. He is like seven five. He's he's probably just matching eyes with you, but to everyone else, he's just this towering. Is, do you know that guy from uh what was it Monstroso from Venture Brothers? Yeah. That big. Oh jeez. You are the second biggest man I ever did see. <laughs> Today. <laughs> Thanks, kid. <laughs> yeah, for well, I'm guessing this is the part where you want to know who I am and who this lovely lady is, as Mary comes back down, just like looking over at Eloy with a bound of hay over her shoulder. <sighs> <laughs> I already know who you are, ma'am. You are my very favorite person right now. All right, you get extra food tonight. Hooray! <laughs> more hay. <laughs> yeah, more hay. <laughs> Second bale. You get on a, me. You get a get a cherry on top of that hay. <laughs> well, me and my wife own this place. I'm sure you know it's the Flappy Stingray. We do a couple of things here. We make sure that folks who come into port get themselves a nice long rest. Maybe get a couple of uh, rolls of the dice here, uh, here once or twice. Not really fond. Mead's not really fond of the gambling scene, but you know we kind of can't get rid of that. So I give people a few uh, chances to roll at the dice. It's uh, it's kind of frowned upon, but at the same time, who's gonna stop earning a couple of money, a couple of bucks? Am I right? Makes sense to me. Uh, not trying to insult, but do people around here also get baths? Yes. Okay, good. Do you have one of those? We do, but it's communal. All deal. <laughs> Uh, he, he looks over at you. Oh, you're gonna need salt, aren't you? Uh, I should be fine either way. It's just be nice to stretch. We get some of your folk around here. We can accommodate. I appreciate it. This place is... If you've noticed from just walking around town, it's a little communal. We're very open to other races, unlike some of the other privateer ports. For good and for bad, we, uh... I'm sure you all are very familiar with the stigma of magic, yes? Yes. <laughs> well, while that is something to raise a brow at, he looks over at Red. Red is just, like, accepting all of this now. Everyone, everyone who's now in the know of this knows that she's a magic caster. But it's not our place to judge. If you're looking to at least help us in this scenario, you'll be able to... You're clearing your name, right? Yes, That's for something I don't believe I was rightfully accused of. I know, last I know. I know. <laughs> Pulls out another cigar. <laughs> Swallows it. <sighs> Adjust his tie. Adjust like the bow tie on him a little bit. I know. I know. But, I will say this, though. Uh, if there's anything about the town that you would like to know about before heading out tomorrow, there is something I can tell you. We do have a town wizard of sorts. Hmm. You'll actually be working with him quite often when it comes to this whole situation. I see. A quick question for me. Uh, yes. Is there a good tailor or a place where I can buy clothing? You're looking for the Gimme Brothers, then. The Gimme Brothers? Yes. You'll be wanting to head over to a very ramshackled forgery. Don't worry, it looks like that on purpose. There's a reason for it, but pay it no mind once you enter. Fair enough, thank you very much. I'll keep a note of that. Anywhere else that looks interesting to you, gentlemen, that you might need? Uh, I made a note last time that Risf uh, suggested I look up Father Dorn. I asked for directions to there. Yes, you're looking for the collective. 
It's going to be on the far eastern side of town, just close to exiting out towards Piranha, uh, Piranha Bog. Thank you very much. I'm going to ask for where my ship was taken, because I don't know the layout of the land. You'll want to go to the Carve House. All right, and where's that? Carve House is just a few blocks away from here. You literally can just walk down here from the street. Good to know. That's where most of the naval uh, fellows like to hang out. Is there anything else that you would need before I get back to my table? Would anyone like to roll of the dice? You know what? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> How uh, much for a roll? You, you see his, his mouth just gleam to a giant smile as he sees that you're in on this. He pulls out another cigar. He's <laughs> got a lot of cigars. <laughs> I pull out my pipe. <laughs> Very nice. Anyone else like to join us? I'll stand by and watch, thank you. I don't know how two-layer games work. All right, son. What's the game? The game's backgammon. I'm kidding. Do we have cards? I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. No, Harold's kind of like lays his hand on the back of you, just like, I'm kidding, son, I'm kidding. I'm just joking with your boy. I'm joking. I'm joking with. That's just, just, you need to learn to laugh, son. Laugh, son. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I wouldn't mind if he sounded like Foghorn Leghorn. That's okay. <laughs> he is this man. Like he, he claims to you that he is a professional gambler. That that was his job before he joined up with Mead. Nice kid, smart as a box of hammers. <laughs> <laughs> that boy's about as sharp as a bowling ball. <laughs> what are you pointing at me? <laughs> That boy's about as sharp as a bowling ball. Okay. <laughs> All right, roulette. All right. I'm guessing this is just a general luck roll, right? Yeah, you're just going to roll. Actually, do me a favor. Roll me a uh, 1d100. So give me the percentile and the... Sure thing. And... D8. You're looking for... Need another d10. Yeah, you need another d10. Hold on, I got it right here. Oh. Boom. All right. As he's rolling, right, I'm my, going to uh, roll mine perception will be to be watching this game very closely. <laughs> very well. Go I, for it. Roll, I, roll investigation. <laughs> I will say, you can do it. I believe in you and give you a bardic inspiration die to add to that. Yo, all right. Well, <laughs> for percentiles, I think I'll hold on to that for later. <laughs> <clears throat> no, for this roll, I'll actually allow it that if you don't like this roll, you can roll it again. Oh, okay. Uh, let's just say that my dice is the tens place. Your dice is the yep single digit. 86. I like that. Alrighty. You said I rolled investigation for that? Yep. Alright, I rolled a 15 watching him roll. Alrighty, let me roll for myself real quick. Okay. Uh, you rolled a 15. 15. Yes? Yes. You actually won. So how much did you put down? I'm gonna say, like... Actually, I'm what's, gonna... What's the standard bet? Because st I didn't standard, actually claim yeah, a... That's fair. Standard bet is 50. Okay. So you put down 50? Yes. You got 100 back. Nice. For, for as far as you know, this looks like a very standard game. Nothing really shady is going on here. Okay. However, there is a dwarf standing below the table. You didn't notice him <laughs> just yet because of how short he was. But you did notice that there's two locks of hair kind of like touching the floor as you look down. <laughs> you forgot me, Dice, you dumb idiot! You watch as like a tiny hand just goes... <laughs> Hmm. Harrow's kind of looks over. One quick question. Hold on one second. Let me just double check something on here. This game of roulette just became a bit more interesting. This game yes. of roulette involves a lot more dice than I imagined. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Sorry about that. It's all good. Our, our roulette wheel prop comes in next week. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't just be playing dice. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Golfer, I guess you won. As Harrow's kind of just like... <sighs> He's a very common patriot. He's just really loud about it. That's right, you bastard! I won! <laughs> As he, like, reaches his hand over. <clears throat> he, like, rakes it in. And he kind of leans up. You now notice that there's... Uh, he's, he's a red-headed dwarf, uh, like, a beard that kind of, like, goes into a slight mohawk, 
and it kind of fades into sideburns into his beard that stretches down that's braided. Well, aren't you a cartoon character? <laughs> that's why they called me Old Honest. I do everything the honest way. How many how many people are in this tavern right now? Uh, we're looking at about like 12 that were in here before, not including you guys that just walked in. One ale is about five copper? Yeah. All right. I throw a gold at the bar. Next round's on me. Everyone in the tavern. Yeah! <laughs> Fucking takes a swig. Uh, you seem to be on a winning... Uh, Harris looks over at you. Well, you two seem to be on a winning streak. Would you like to roll again? You know what? Why not? All right, so you two are getting, gonna go ahead and get yourselves a mug of ale. Everyone here, I want you to roll me a wisdom check. Sorry. Let you go ahead and go first. Hmm. Five. Hey, eleven. Five, eleven, and uh, your wisdom. Oh, my wisdom save. Sorry, or wisdom throw. Blah, 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 blah. Uh, that would be 15. 15. All right. You two take notice that you were not given just regular ale. This tastes way stronger. Almost has a really bitter burn aftertaste to it, but it feels good going down. Mm. This is some pretty strong stuff. Uh, <clears throat> Eloy. You fortify this stuff. <laughs> you kind of like just feel like someone punched you in the face and you're tilting to the side. Thank you. <laughs> the horse can't keep his beer. Finish it up, lad. I'm an ass. I finish it. <laughs> Roll again. <laughs> Six. <laughs> See? Slow but steady improvement. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> One-off. Fuck! <laughs> For those of you at home, Zito just rolled a one. <laughs> no, 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 that's not a one. That's yeah. a seven. Oh, yeah. seven? One oh. above what he did. Oh, okay, yeah. never mind. I thought it was a one from here. Okay, well, the dwarf takes a chug as well. He looks like he got punched in the face. As he, like, you, you watch as he, like, takes the chug. <laughs> like, leaks out the side of his mouth. <laughs> Back up. <laughs> He's had a few before this, I take it. He's had a few before this, but No he... dwarf goes down that quick. Yeah, no, he's he's felt this before. You, on the other hand, oh boy, you feel like you're gonna throw up. This shit burns far <laughs> too much. I don't... I, I like the first one, I don't think I like the second one. Is this kerosene? <laughs> <laughs> ah, close to it, it's Dragon's Breath Boy. Oh. <laughs> ah. You see, I make sure that everyone gets the good stuff. Especially when they're playing. All right, well, let's roll. Go. <laughs> nope. <laughs> 18. You rolled an 18? Oh, boy. Okay. I'm doing the same bet, by the way. Okay. 50? All yeah. right. Golfer puts down 50 as well. Unfortunately, he gets the pot as well. So he gets he, the pot this time? Yep, so now he is up 150. You're now 50. All right. You, right on point. the other hand, seem that that feels a little strange. I want you to roll me an insight. Uh, wait, f would that be under investigation? Investigation? Apologies. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, 17. 17? Something's not right with the fact that you can't see Gopher when he makes his rolls. The fact that I've had a bit to drink, does that affect anything? No, like you how much see, have I drank? You, you drank one swig of it. Okay. You were you took it like a champ. Okay. You're fine. If you uh he is expecting you to finish it though, and Haros is like just sitting there just like, well, he bought the drink, <laughs> you may as well <laughs> yeah, have he gave it. Gave the drink. Okay. So. Go Golfer is insistent that everyone has a chug of Dragon's Fire. You know, Golfer, I think it's a little interesting that you uh, convince everyone to drink when you roll. Well, I figured that this lad was so nice in making sure everyone had it that I made sure that everyone in the patron uh, place made sure they had a good sip. Another! Throwing cold <laughs> at the bar. 
Everyone roll wisdom. You get disadvantage. No more free Eloy. No more free Eloy, please. <laughs> what did you get? Uh, well, that's my first roll. That was a, let's see. That was a... <laughs> ah! <laughs> oh, no! <laughs> that is a natural one. That's a four. I got a modified 20. Oh, wait, no. Wisdom 21. Uh, I got a modified 20. You crash through the table. <laughs> I would like to be shown to my pile of hay now. <laughs> Let's you imagine you weren't even at a table. You stumbled over one. Heck! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're on the floor. I'm sorry, you are out. I, sh I should probably help him. <laughs> to the room. Harris just goes, stay at the table. All right. <laughs> Wait. We're going to see if I'm getting drunk. <laughs> nah, the, 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 the better of me wants to help him get to a room. If you do that, you're going to get out. Uh, if you do that, you forfeit the rest of the rolls. I walk up. Golfer I'll did. help him. It's fine. Yeah, Golfer was just like, wait, let's just like, come on, come on. And then you just open your mouth. I'll, yeah. I'll help him. It's fine. I'm sure we can manage. All right, I'll see this little... Sherrod through. <laughs> All right. All right. So I want you to roll me an <laughs> athletics check. Oh, <laughs> to terrific. Lift that to centaur. lift this fucker up. How much do you weigh, Ben? <laughs> 14. How, I don't know how much he weighs, but yeah, I'm not sure either. Either. half a horse weigh. All right, let, 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 let's see if you weigh. can. Let's see if you can even help in this scenario. I'm gonna say you roll me a Constitution check, a Constitution save. But also roll me for disadvantage. Okay. Yeah. Ah, well, well, it doesn't. It doesn't get yep, that. doesn't get lower than a nat one. <laughs> That's a three. Well, roll me one more time, Grant. Me? Yes. Oh, athletic. God. <laughs> he is out like a light. You're lifting centaur Nine. dead weight. You get him halfway up the stairs, but then you fumble down. Like, oh! you, yeah, you just fu you fucking hear like. Eh, eh. Ah! <laughs> All right. Note to self. Keep Eloy away from the sauce. That's five points of damage as you are now crushed under a centaur. <laughs> Where is Timothy? He made it strong. Oh, I have to cradle me in his arms. <laughs> oh, I have to rock me to sleep. Get <laughs> Timothy. Okay. Gotta be so okay. At, at this point, we Red's just like figure this out. <laughs> Mage hand to help you assist him up the stairs. <laughs> hey, Timothy, I love you. Timothy's the best. Dude. You, you, you see man. out, you, you look outside the window, there's Timothy's big head just rise up, <laughs> single tear with a smile, and then rise and then pan back down. Okay, so you. All right, let's let's play the let's play the dice. Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven. All right. 57, 18. Haros uh, takes a look over at Golfer this whole time as he's making the roll. Golfer doesn't win this round, but I need you to roll me a perception check. All right. Eighteen. Golfer kind of snuck down at the last minute. You noticed that he was hiding away from Haros that last roll and allowed you to take the pot on that. You got fifty. You got one hundred fifty bucks out of that. One hundred fifty. Well, right. you're up to one hundred fifty. Okay. Okay. I'm. Up. Yeah. Okay. You. You are now in the lead. Haros is. Uh, Haros paid you out, and now Golfer kind of like slunked away from the roll at the last minute, and it looks like he may have let you take that hit. Hmm. I'm going to pay extra close attention to him next time when he's rolling just to see if I see something that he's doing. You're going to take another roll at this? But Boys. not before I buy everybody another drink! Not this guy you hear from me upstairs. All right. As I come back down. Roll, wis the roll wisdom. I've from helping Eli. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to roll wisdom real quick for him. Okay. Right. Roll wisdom for you. 
You might have just eaten my good roll. You ate my good roll! Nice! <laughs> <laughs> uh, that went straight to my head. <laughs> that's a nat that's a nat one. Roll me a con save. Con save! I did make my way down to grab the drink that was thrown Oh, out, you're though. still going to be in on this? Oh, yeah. All I've, right. I've come back downstairs. All right. Okay. Uh, 16 as a con save. Shit. Seven. All right. That shit hit you, but from now on, if you're going to you're gonna take rolls with, uh, you're going to take rolls with disadvantage. Until I sober up. Yep. I rolled a seven for my wisdom check. You're taking disadvantage rolls, too, now. Great. Okay, roll roll to uh hit them bones, my boy. Let's do it! Woo! Five! Yeah, golfer's kind of like in on this. I need you to roll me an in uh a perception check. Investigation check okay. uh, with we, uh we, with disadvantage. Okay. Yeah, I still I still haven't lost my uh perception with disadvantage. Yeah, let's roll in the two D20s. Which one's worse? Because I got a nat 20 and a 6. I guess a 6 is worse than a nat 20. Uh, 6 plus... This is wisdom, right? Yep. Yeah, 9. I rolled 17 on my investigation. That was my lowest roll. Your lowest roll? Yeah. When you, when you take a look at Golfer from where you're standing, you notice that his leg twitches every time he's about to take a roll. Unfortunately, you lost the pot, and now we're back to Golfer having 150 and you at 50. We're good. Haros is kind of smiling this whole time as he goes, This is cute, boys. I like this. I especially <laughs> like you for <laughs> buying everyone a whole bunch of rounds. You're very, uh, very gentlemanlike. You're a good person, too. I like your stingray flaps. <laughs> Ow! Why? <laughs> is this a sign of affection where you come from? Mary kind of just goes, yes. <laughs> he is a tiefling, after all. Do I take any damage from the cigar? Just, just, a, just take a one. It okay. was, he, he made sure that you were getting, like, the ash of it. So gotcha. it's like, it's not, it wasn't meant to, like, hurt you, but it's just, like, to maybe sober you up a little bit. Roll insight. Insight to see if I, what, there, sober up. Insight is wisdom. Haros is kind of seeing if you could help him kind of, like, spot golfer's bullshit. Mm -hmm. Thirteen. You kind of, like, snap to attention, like, ah! <laughs> as you notice, as, like, Haros is now, like, looking to the corner, trying to, like, show you to, like, watch the leg. Okay, I'll watch the leg. <laughs> you said it out loud. No, I won't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never, still a little drunk. Never mind. Golfer doesn't fucking pay attention. Good. <laughs> he didn't notice that little hint. All right. So you noticed that yeah, he's I, hitting I the saw, leg. I saw his leg twitch. And now you've been told to watch the leg. Are you going to go again? But this time, Haros is now, okay, boys, I like this, but we're going to raise the stakes now. The minimum is 100. <laughs> That's stupid. 500! <laughs> <gasps> Golfer looks at you. <laughs> Why my beard? <laughs> Do you even have that? I open my purse. Well, when, uh, I, pull, I pull out the purse the captain gave me. <laughs> yup. Slam it on the table. Do you? He'll take that bet. <laughs> All right. <laughs> He'll take that bet. And then some. Oh. <laughs> All right, lad, we'll make this interesting then. I have me. This little gem locket here. Mm. A pretty lass gave this to me. She said something about how it's supposed to make you feel good when you wear it. <laughs> I don't buy that bullshit for a second. But I'll put this in as collateral. What do you got? I have a boat. <laughs> Yo. Still a little drunk. Yes. <laughs> no, this is good. Ezra's just watching this all go down, just like, okay. 
<laughs> I'm so sorry you got, you got ripped out of this. I'm so sorry. But that's honest rolls, man. I, I really like that we're getting tanked the night before we're supposedly going to help out on this investigation, but whatever. Yeah, no, this is fine. Har- Haros is pushing this on you guys. And, and Mary's just sitting there just going, oh, he's, he's at it again, isn't he? God damn it. I'll, I'll, I'll get the salt water for them tomorrow morning. When they wake up belligerently drunk <laughs> with a hangover. All right, so he will accept that collateral. Roll them bones. All right, this might be where I finally use that bardic inspiration. <laughs> yes, I will use that bardic inspiration since that was a 34. 69. Yeah! <laughs> yeah! yeah. <laughs> 75. Wait, I thought we were using my purple. Oh, right, right, right. 57. 57. I I apologize. I apologize. Roll me investigation. Oh, yeah, that's right. I'm also looking at his leg. Oh, Uh, am I still? I was going to say, is it still disadvantage? Yeah. Okay. Am I still disadvantage? Yeah, I guess I am. I'm drunk enough to bet my boat. Yes. Both good rules. Uh, Uh, 16 for me. That's a 8. One second, I'm going to roll for the fact that he didn't take a swig of his, and Haros is looking at him like, aren't you going to finish? Mmm, <laughs> drinks it like a champ. Okay. Wait. Yeah. Okay. He's I kicking the table. Ah, okay. Excuse me, barkeep. <clears throat> I have a problem with this game of roulette. <laughs> I think it's called roll it. You, you are you are you are facing you are facing Scrung and Mary's right there on the other side. Like sweetheart, I think you mean over here. Do you now? Scrung says. Particularly with our dwarven friend over there. You got a problem with old honest <laughs> Honest Gopher? Honest Gopher, my friend. I think you have a little bad habit. You've got a bit of a twitchy leg down there. Well, of course I do. Behold! He, like, lifts... He tries to lift his leg up off the table, and he fucking falls over. (laughs) But then you notice that his leg is artificial. He kind of lifts it up. It's wood. It's It's a wooden leg. As you can see, lad, I have a condition. And by Jove... When I feel an itch to gamble, me old leg acts up. It acts up just enough to kick the table every time it just happens to be your turn. I don't know, that just it's a nervous, seems a little strange Unfortunately, to me. it's a nervous <laughs> twitch, you see. And I'm going to roll deception to, <laughs> to your insight. I have a lip. It matches. Oh. You We're bo- tricking each other. You are both fucking just sitting there looking at each other like... A stare down. Yeah. This is a stare down. He doesn't give a fuck for your sass, and you don't give a fuck for him. <laughs> but unfortunately, Harris is looking at you both in a drunken mess just like... Are we done here? I'll keep an eye on him, but... We'll put that to attention, so how about this? We'll take this one more time, gentlemen. But I thought I got that one. (laughs) You did get that one, son, but wait a minute. Okay. (laughs) Why don't you give it a try? I would be happy to. Purple is tens. Let me see. Oh, three. Three? So That'd be a 13. You got a 13. 13. All right, let me, get, let me grab those. Golfer will now try his hand at it. Roll Wait. me perception without, uh, with disadvantage. With disadvantage, okay. I feel like we're changing the variable that I don't have a problem with. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not gonna, that, that's a seven. You don't notice shit. He doesn't win, so he's, he doesn't, he takes the fall somehow. 
That's a mighty pot to take the fall on. <laughs> yeah. I'll take it. Well, no, he didn't. He wasn't rolling for you. He was just rolling to prove his innocence. I thought we just rolled for my thing. <laughs> we did roll for your thing, and he is. He does. And Harris goes, as you can see, nothing's wrong here. So our friend here has won. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> Flagger holding a hold of the horses there for a quick second. I'm lad. just like reaching in. <laughs> no, no, no. How about how about this? I know where I can get me a ship. A ship? Yes, a ship. Haros now just like puts his hand down. <laughs> What's the meaning of this? What do you mean a ship? I've come across reaches into his pants. <laughs> This map leading to an abandoned ship. Just a just a <laughs> big ship just sitting there. Yes. I'll give you the deed to it. The deed to the map? The deed to the abandoned ship? Shit, is it a deed or a map? I don't remember. <laughs> no, it's a map. It's a map. I was okay. I I'm 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 going to drink the rest of my shit and oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> Did you you look at it. It's a it's a map that leads to <laughs> it's like clearly a map. It's a map that clearly I'm guessing leads. I look at it enough to be like he is telling the truth. It is in fact a map, but not enough for me to memorize its location. And yes. Not need the map. No, he's he's willing to wager a map. Unfortunately, he's so fucking belligerently drunk that you're not sure if he's trying to say it's a treasure map or if it's a map to a ship or something. You can't fucking tell right now. Even he's so fucking wrecked that you can't tell if he's being truthful or not. But it's a map. The fact that I can speak Dwarvish helped me understand. He, he's not speaking Dwarvish. <laughs> he's just straight up speaking common. Okay. But he's putting a map down for the whole shebang. For one more roll. For double but or if, nothing for on this map that there is... In all Possibly. honesty, no reason I should believe him that that <laughs> goes to anywhere. Only because it is convenient for our quest that it might be true. <laughs> <sighs> Blind greed. Oh, and by the way, have another one on me. <laughs> well, you have another one on me. I put three copper in front of him. <laughs> This is now Drunk Quest, chat. <laughs> this is Drunk Quest. Alright, if I fail this, I'm... Uh, that's a 16. Is that a fail? You make it. Okay. You make it. You're, you're still fine. Hold on. Him, on the other hand... Oh, no. He's getting a disadvantage roll. I walk up. My buddy Wake here is gonna win this bet, and here's how I know. I want Wake to keep the gold he's earned, and I pull from my pocket the signet ring of a duke. This ring here... Is incredibly valuable. Far more valuable than any ship, but I am so confident in my friend here, I am going to put this on the table in exchange for his winnings. I'm a little drunk, but I'd rather that pen and it's shiny and pretty. <laughs> <laughs> Haros will take a look at that signet ring. Whoa, he almost rolled a 20. <laughs> they put this down for 2k. Flaggers like, okay, roll the bones! <laughs> I was gonna grab the uh, amulet off the table if we're uh, switching shit up this way. <laughs> sleight of hand roll. There's no sleight of hand. No, I said, yeah, instead I, of, he's, he's yeah. offering that instead of my gold. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm putting, so I'm that, the, I'm putting uh, that to be in exchange for his. Alright, so he rolled himself a 41. You roll. Alright. Roll well. Nope. That's 100. Oh, wait, that's 100. Whoa! I think that's Bam. good. Haros just goes, and the winner goes to Mr. Wake. Booyaka! May I get my ring back, please? Flat. <laughs> Golfer is. What is you roll? <laughs> Golfer is just sitting there like. What? <laughs> I just sit there. Because <laughs> I like pick up with a perfect drunk. score. All right, so I want you to write down that your winnings are now one thousand five hundred. You get a map. And you get a pendant. All right, so I am, I am a very well-off person at the moment. <laughs> yes, you are. The wealthiest right. member of our crew. I'm gonna get rid of that tumor since I gave that to the captain. The captain now has a tumor, or the governor. <laughs> uh, what is this pendant okay. I have? You don't know, but it's a I'll very, it's a very large. It, it has the image, the visage of a viper, opening its mouth, and inside the mouth of the viper is an opal. Viper pendant. And uh, a map. Mr. Harrows 
takes another swig on his cigar, only going halfway. He's drinking that cigar. Right yeah, now. no, he's drinking it now. Fuck it, why not? <laughs> he's drinking that shit. This wouldn't happen to be from the temple, would it? Don't you fucking judge me, Haros. I got it honest, fair, and square from those idiots over at the boardwalk company. There you are, lad. Mm. I put ten. I put ten gold on the bar. Drinks are on me for the rest of the night. <laughs> we'll cut. We will cut this little sh shindig off. You got yourself a hefty chunk of gold. I do. I really do. At this point, Haros is like, okay, I think that's enough for you boys. Why don't you go on up to your We're room? We're on a hot streak! <laughs> is that so? I'm kidding, I'm kidding, it's fine. No, you said hot streak and Haros like turns his head. <laughs> like just grinning. Is that so? You got a little bit of an itch to you, do you? Here's the thing, I know when to call a quince and when to come out ahead. I think we're good. I understand your concern. Hit the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I'll get him to his room. I lift. I help to lift him up a little, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you all go ahead and get some nice. Uh, you get to get a night's sleep. Does the night's right. sleep uh, restore my yes, lost yes, health points? <laughs> yes, it does. I'm not going to be that cruel to you. Thank you. You feel a little sore in the morning, but oh you're yeah, good. you feel a little sore. I'm gonna say this. Do we have to roll for hangovers? No, I was about to say this. Your hangover will only, for, for the first couple of social, uh, or like any of your skill rolls, I'm gonna have to ask you to roll disadvantage. Okay. At least for like the first five. Anything that's mental, I'm guessing. Yeah, but this won't hang around for that long. All right. All right. So you wake up the next morning. All of you are just holding your faces in misery. Oh. Is there like a water bowl in my room anywhere? Yeah. I'm gonna go splash my face, <laughs> and I'm gonna get dressed in something a little more comfortable. Put on my kilt and my boots and my... Just a, a, a nice loose-fitting shirt, since I know that I'm not... I'm in a place where... Alrighty, you people guys... People like me can hang out just fine. You guys all go downstairs. Mary's sitting there just looking at you with the biggest shit-eating grin on her face, like... Can I fun just, night, boys? Real quick. Metagame say that I'm glad that we had 24 hours to discuss whether or not we actually wanted to help with this investigation <laughs> and we spent it gambling and drinking. <laughs> like true pirates. We didn't have a choice. <laughs> Harris, gonna, Harris wasn't going to like force you into it. You went in fair. on that. That's fair. No, okay. uh, no, no, no. I'm, I, I know didn't in mean the, the gambling. Scheme. I mean, I mean like in terms of helping this investigation and proving our innocence. We don't really have a choice in that one. So getting drunk feels like a good thing to do. <laughs> I understand the grand scheme, but I use the ploy of, we need to talk about this before we give you our answer, <laughs> yeah. and we did no such thing. <laughs> so, Mary's now sitting there just, like, giggling at you all, just like, you guys have a good night, huh? I, just, <laughs> I slap a couple of copper on the table. Can I get some bread and cheese? <laughs> Absolutely, sweetheart. You sit right there. Thank you. Yeah, she just comes back with, like, a bowl of hard-boiled eggs, some bread, and some water for everyone at the table. I consume. Thank you. You had it worse, sweetheart. Are you okay? <laughs> I, I, I had these dreams about Timothy, only he was being real mean to my head. <laughs> <laughs> She's just like, huh. Oh. Tim She's, like, trying to, like... Like, she's, like, scratching her face. She's like, what are you... Oh, you mean the McCallick boy. I, I guess. He's a real big boy. You'd know him if you saw him. Yes, we do know him. Uh, he does a lot of... Uh, he does a lot of grunt work for Mead and uh, for the townsfolk around here. He has his own little pumpkin patch out by the general store. Oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> yes, he, uh, he tends to making sure that the crows don't get to his, uh, his produce. But, uh... He's not very keen on making sure that in his little bursts, uh, his little bursts of rage, he takes care of the birds, but also steps on the pumpkins. Life is cruel like that. So, boys, uh, my <laughs> husband's out gathering a little bit more information on the small matter that we're taught we discussed the other night. However, this does mean that you all have free range to go meander about town, as you will. You are all uh, looking for certain locations, yes? Correct. Well. I may say this, it might 
be best if you all went together because you might find something a little bit, oh, shall we say, more safety in numbers when walking around town, especially near Black Street. No diggity. Uh, understood. That seems fair. I'm looking around the room. Is Red anywhere in here? Red is downstairs drinking coffee right now. All right. I'm going to actually walk up to her and ask her if she knows anything about this pendant that I have, that I won. I got drunk last night, and I ended up with this thing. Do you she know looks, what this is? She looks at you and just goes, really? I wasn't aware. <laughs> okay, you were there. Uh, do you know what this is? You seem like you would know something about this. She takes it from you. Things like it. She takes out a small, like, little magnifying glass, a little, like a little monocle that, like, stretches out a little bit. She starts taking a gander at it. This is odd. This is a protection amulet, but based on this sort of make, the Yati seem to be the ones who made this. Just gonna go ahead and roll general knowledge there. Nope. Oh, that's a natural one. <laughs> <laughs> All you need to know is is that this gives you an active plus one to any roll you would like to throw for one day. It's an active charge amulet that gives you a plus one to any roll. Okay, so I get to use it once per day? It has one day charge. Okay, so I can use it one day and it will just work for that day? Yes. Okay. All right, so gentlemen, uh, go ahead and talk amongst yourselves as it is now time to decide where you want to go today. Well, I know well. Eloy wants to visit uh, with Father What's-His-Name. I'd like to buy some clothes for my potential new entertainment partners, but that can wait. Wake, where were you wanting to go? I just wanted to go check on my boat, but you know what? I think I'm okay now. I can go wherever <laughs> you guys want to go. I, I say attaching the amulet to the back of my neck. Yep, and you also have the map. I do. I keep, I'm keeping it safely in a little uh, leather tube on my side. All righty where I keep a lot of my cartography equipment. All right, so I'm going to say here that we actually are running on almost time for another break. Oh, we yeah. actually are. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Cool. So you can meander about the town when we come back from break. Sounds Excellent. good. You guys Dude. stay tuned. We'll be right back. Hello, everybody. Oh, oh, so before we begin, oh. uh, my girlfriend actually made a very good point. Grant metagame, so dodge roll. <laughs> you failed. You fool. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> How could you, Grant? So anyway, uh, of the two places that we want to go, um, we want to see your cleric, and you wanted to see some clothes shops, right? Yes. Yep. And uh, by the by, at this point, Risp and uh, Pliskin have uh, stopped by to check on you guys. So uh, since Mary was uh, very keen on making sure that you uh, travel as a pack, you could take someone else along with you. I think we can drag Risk along. I mean, he Risk definitely knows where he needs to go, and yeah. he seems like a uh, somebody that we've been kind of friendly with so far. Risk actually comes in uh, dressed in the same outfit he's wearing, but he's wearing different. Like you saw, like that belt he was wearing. Mm -hmm. There are different pendants now on his uh, chest. They like rotated. They're all like in different spots. Like each day, he's actually like taking them and like kind of swapping them in place. For some reason, you don't know why, but he's now he now has the face of what looks like a rat. Uh, now, the emblem of a rat is now on the top as opposed to what was before, which looked like an ember. I walk up to them. Oh, hey, how are you guys doing? Oh, no. Oh, you look like shit, Pliskin says. <laughs> yeah, but I had a good night. <laughs> it was eventful, to say the least. Why, well, what happened, if I could ask? We won big at the table. <laughs> the table? Yeah. Wait. You didn't do any dice rolls, so you didn't do any rule uh, dice rolls, Jesus. You haven't done any uh roulette wheeling with uh this stout little dwarf now, have you? Yeah, I think I took him for almost all he was worth. Son of a bitch, you're the one who took down Golfer. That was his, I think that's his name. That that's sounds, his name. sounds yeah. about right. Yeah, he calls himself Honest Golfer around here, but he's a swindler. He's very common for picking gambling rings with uh, some new folk in town and just swindling them out of everything they own. 
Well, that didn't work out so well. I say patting my massive coin purse. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Must not be all that good at cheating. Well, I'll tell you this. You mentioned that at the carve house, you might get a little bit of fame on you. Oh, good. Maybe I will stop by there later then. Actually, is the carve house on our way to any of their locations? Uh, Mary points out that the carve house would be the closest stop to go. It's right by the port. It's just that you'll unfortunately get a lot of watchful eyes from the guards because they're, again, watching you in particular making sure we don't leave. and making sure right. you don't leave. So you'll get some weary eyes, but if you go into the carve house, they'll leave you alone. All right. But I was curious if it was like on the way to one of their two locations. Uh, you'd have to go south of the Flappy Stingray, like towards the port. But then if you make the turn, if you remember you were heading up towards where Mead was, on mm -hmm. the east side of town, that's where the marketplace was. Ah, okay. And uh, you'd be able to get to a bunch of locations. And that uh, the collective was on the eastern side of town as well. Okay. Well, I make mention to... Uh... Risp and play. I, I guess I shouldn't say like, you know, I'll bring along whoever uh, yeah. I should give them the option of coming along I tell them that uh, we're going to go run a couple errands as a group uh, He needs to go see a clothing store and he wants to go see a man about a faith <laughs> Yeah, you told me told me Risp to go talk to father Dorn. Like, yeah, like fucking snaps his neck to you with a big smile like really? <laughs> yeah, man, what I, I, I Look, I tried to learn the druid ways, but old lady Big Rock Mountain kept on sending rock slides at me, so I, I just want to get something to make that stop if I ever go home again, you know? Oh, that's terrible. I, you may have a hex on you. Come, let's go to the collective right away. Yes, please. So, Risf is just fucking on the ball, ready to go. He's ready to go see this collective. All right, well, that sounds <laughs> like a destination. Let's make our way there. Uh, Red just looks over and uh, and says, if you, uh, if you happen to stop by... Uh, she found out that there was a place called the Rest Easy Casters. That's, uh, the local, uh, sanctioned magic shop. She's gonna go head over there for a little bit. Since now the secret's out, she can't really hide it. Alright. And, uh, Pliskin was more in favor of heading over to the carve house anyway. Oh, well, we might see him there later. And Skrung... <laughs> he's not here. Shocker. So you have your destinations. Where are we going to go first? All right. Um, I got a lot of money on me. So <laughs> I think we should go someplace where that could at least be a little bit spent. And he did help me out last night. So uh, we can head to your clothing shop first. Terrific. To the Gimme Brothers then. All right. You're going to head to... At least that's my vote if anybody yeah, else has. Uh, so uh, Mary gives you a general idea of where you need to go. You are now in like... The same square you were in before when you were heading up to Mead's estate, you're now in the marketplace. There's a couple of stores all around. There are folks now just wandering about, doing their normal business. And uh, you're starting to piece together that it was a good idea that no one really speak that much about the lockdown. Because if they found out that, like, ships just stopped coming in, this place would be a madhouse. Okay. So, because this looks like they are completely, like on the fringe of just getting some new stuff, like new stuff that comes in from, t uh, from on the mainland, other islands. Without export, they would be lost to these people. Uh, so you head over and you notice that you are looking for, once again, the, uh, you're looking for a building that is kind of disheveled, like more so than anything else on this island. And you happen to do notice that there is a building that looks like smoke is emanating from it. You do see a ramshack forge, but oh boy, this place looks like a siege went down. Okay. There's like broken pieces of the wall on the second floor. The building's cave, like the, the roof is caved in. The door looks, it's made of metal. It looks like the only thing that's sturdy and keeping it there. The windows are broken. There looks like something almost tried to burst through the side of the building. This looks like a war came out of this place. <laughs> okay. But based on Mary's I was say, the directions, was, this is the place. It's going to look bad, but there's a reason was yep. basically the insight I was given. Riss kind of like looks over to you and just like kind of grabs you by the uh, pant leg and just goes, just be cautious when you open the door, please. Of course. I walk open, or I walk over. You walk over to the door, roll perception check. You got it. Hey, nine. I told you to aim for the head! Now shoot me, you son of a bitch! Huh. 
I... <laughs> what a kind place. <laughs> uh, I'm going to shout from outside the door. Excuse me! We've got some patrons out here just wondering <laughs> if... Are any of us hurt? Did this, do we hear the shot? Is All of you hear the shot. You you saw the muzzle flash okay. from the windows. There is now a new dent on the other <laughs> side of the room, of the other side of the building. Did they hear me yelling at all, trying to announce our entrance and hope for safety? You hear from inside, come in! Great, open the door. I stay behind Ezra as we <laughs> enter. <laughs> I'm more curious, I step forward. <laughs> Risp is just nonchalantly walking in. Uh, you notice that there are some bits and bobs about this place that look like they've been tinkered with, almost kind of the same way as Skrung's gun before. Okay. There is odd bits and pieces of tech strewn about here, stuff that looks like Tesla coils on the side of the wall. Like, this is not the, what I expected. The, when the I went forge to is like melting inside, in, inside the building. There's like a little waterfall of lava coming into a small cauldron. There are. There are weapons and pieces of armor just strewn about the place. This looks like, like there's a wall that displays some like really fancy looking stuff, but there's like broken hilts on the floor. There's shards of glass and shit. This place just looks like a war zone. And speaking of war zone, you walk in as there's a small halfling in a striped shirt holding up a giant blunderbuss bigger than he is. And there's another, what looks like halfling, kind of like scrunched into the side of the wall after being shot at. He is clearly taking aim, and he's okay with that. I already ah, like welcome this to the place. shop, gentlemen. How can I help you? Well, good to know you're test your equipment thoroughly. The man from the wall speaks up. Gimme, you stupid shit! It didn't kill me! You said it was a guaranteed kill! Well, it would have if you just tinkered with the screw a little bit to the right gimmick instead of the left! The, the other... The other half, like, he looks identical to this to the <laughs> other man. Just kind of like, oh, shimmies himself out as the armor breaks apart and falls off him. It looked like some sturdy shit, like, but... It looked like four platings of armor on this man just kind of, like, crumbled off. Gentlemen, I was wondering if you had any fine clothes for sale. Clothes? Ah, that would be gimmick. <laughs> ah, yes, you're looking for clothing, eh? Oh, do oh, please don't mind the mess. We're just testing our latest equipment nowadays. So, uh, what can I interest you in? Well, I'm a bit of a performer, and I have a new friend here, and I was wondering if I could outfit him with a fun costume. The, both of them just look at you, <laughs> look at him especially. <laughs> He looks like fun. He look, give, give me, give oh, me. I am the most fun. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Tell us, uh, would you, uh, how long are you staying in town for? For the foreseeable future. <laughs> ah, fantastic. You know, we actually wouldn't mind using you as a test dummy. Oh, whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait a minute, gentlemen. I just want some clothes for this man. I don't want us to put him in any danger. Oh, no, of course not. We wouldn't put him in the more serious tech issue stuff. I half expect you to ask, hold on, hold on. <laughs> How much does it pay? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, trust no us. Thief. We wouldn't We wouldn't put our customers in harm's way. Oh, please, no. We just like to make sure we test our products on ourselves. That way we can prove its maximum efficiency for the customer. Hmm. This, right. this might be a silly question, but if you if you was to kill him... Then you'd know your your thing worked, but wouldn't you be dead? <laughs> That's impossible because this idiot's calculations are never right. That's funny because this asshole's calculations are usually never right. What did you say? I'll fucking kill you! Oh, I'm sorry, but what were we speaking of? You know what? That's clearly your business. Forget I said anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair enough. Trust us. We know that, unfortunately, a lot of our products aren't potentially what we would like them to do for their maximum efficiency, but we test what we can and try to tinker with some new things so that if you would like to see our more experimental equipment, we can absolutely show you. But you're here looking for clothing, yes? At least I am. These two gentlemen can also search, as, search your wares as they please. You look like someone who could use a new weapon. <laughs> I, I pull out my spear. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> That's fair. You, uh, hmm. You don't seem all that well off for the heat of battle, though. You just look a little roby. Yeah, I should be fine, though. Well, I, do, I don't see much battle. That's fair. If you're looking for anything to fix up this tattered little mess of yours, we're welcome to give you something. 
I like these clothes. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful to how you speak to this gentleman. He uh he beat the gambling dwarf over at the flappy uh, stingray. Oh, you did a number on uh, on a uh, golfer, did you? Yeah. He, oh, uh, good. So at least someone stuck it to him. Well, it had to happen at some point, and I'm glad it was me. <laughs> How long have you been here for? What time is it? <laughs> Fresh off the boat, eh? Yes. Oh! Oh, you're the gentleman Mr. Mead speak of. Oh. Well, I hope. For the most part, well, we know what you're about, and we know why you're here. Oh, terrific. Of course. So, you said you were looking for clothing, yes? I yes. Guess we, I guess we'll go straight to business then, so we can get you on your merry way. Definitely. So, what kind of clothing, uh, clothing were you looking for? I was hoping for something flashy. I don't know. It could have feathers, I suppose. But, of course, it's all up to Eloy. Eloy, if you were to be on a stage playing your music for a crowd of people, how would you want to look? I, I heard the word feathers, and I like that. You do, eh? What, could, could we get, like, like big old feathery wings that could come out my back? Ooh. Well, you say that. But there actually is something we can do with that. Tell us, um, what do you know of the trail that leads up to Piranha Bog? I'm, I'm going to assume very little. <laughs> okay, that's fair. You did notice that there were plenty of birds around the island, yes? I'm, I mean, you got, you got seagulls. I had some of those the other night. They were tasty. Roll, in, roll intelligence. <laughs> oh, man, is this going to be a side quest for a costume? I am playing a Three. Three. You remember there were squawky things on the way up to Mead's uh, estate. Something was making noise. Yep. <laughs> well, on the way to Piranha Bog, we actually noticed that uh, there's a high volume of very tropical birds. If you could actually get a few for us, we could get some of the feathers off them and make you a fine coat out of it. I mean, I got this bow and arrows. I can hunt. I mean, I, I can do that. That's fine. We yeah. don't mind that either. Matter of fact, we can give you one of our test weaponry to see if you would like to help us collect a few. Hmm. Sure. Perfect. So they, like, they press a button and the entire panel flips over and there's nothing but a ray of, like, bow guns and shot... And not bow guns, like, bow guns and crossbows. Yeah. Like, these boys were prepared. There's, like, four buttons on the panel and they each have a function. You, uh... You take notice that there are at least, like, four different kinds of crossbows. Some of them big, two of them big, two of them small. Two of them looking like that the, the string mechanic is different in that it's kind of oily. Like, it's pulled back to prove that it can shoot an arrow, but the, the string is oiled up and greasy, but, like, visibly so. The other uh, part of it looks like there's an igniter on the tail, on the very end of where the arrow is when you let go. And the two small ones, you can't really see the fine details of it, but it looks like the the uh, bodies of them are altered slightly. Boy, these look way fancier than what I'm used to. I just pull my short bow out. See, this is what I'm used to. It's pretty simple. You just pull back and you go. Where are you from? <laughs> I am from uh, Old Lady Big Rock Mountain. They both look at each other like, what the fuck, what? That, that is the mountain on which we live. It is also uh, who we pray to to not send rock slides down to kill us. Riff, ca Riss kind of just like holds his <laughs> hand up, a his little clawed uh, hand up a little bit. He's from the mainland. Oh. Well, we're willing to uh, rent one of these off to you. You can purchase them, but uh, I'm afraid this gentleman here looks like he's the only person who could... Uh, they all look at your pouch. <laughs> Who can afford something of that caliber? How much are we talking? Three grand. Oh, wow. You misjudge me, sir. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Well, like we said, uh, we do know what you're, uh, where you're going, and if you promise that you uh, try to head towards a certain path to find a whole bunch of birds, we're willing to let you uh, rent a piece of equipment. I'm noticing a lot of grease and uh, perhaps even an igniter on this thing. Will this ensure a clean kill? Will you be able to use the carcasses we bring back if this is the weapon we uh, <laughs> employ? We don't know. We didn't, <laughs> try these, we, didn't, we didn't try these out yet. That's why it's a test. Hmm. Eloy, I wonder if this is the best course of action if we're looking for beautiful feathers for your outfit. Yeah. Speaking of, I'm realizing that 
maybe this will be a bit more expensive than I had initially considered. Well, how uh, much were you looking to spend? I was thinking, oh, somewhere in the range of like two to three hundred. No, we can do this. Okay. We can do this, but it would benefit us, though. We can make it better if you bring us the materials. Ah, okay. So if you bring your own materials, we can work with something. That's actually what we like to do. We like to tinker in, with such ways. <laughs> You're our synthesis shop. <laughs> um, I pull out my crossbow and dagger, uh, basically presenting them as... Speaking of, these are the weapons I typically deal in. Uh, is Do you have anything like these... Just, you know, better, <laughs> fancier, stronger. Of course we do. <laughs> Pre like, just, you see Gimmick, uh, like, just slam his fist on the on the table, and the crossbow swift over, and now there's knives. Just a huge array of knives. I like this place. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, just pick it out. Tell us what you want the knife to do, and we'll probably have something that works that way. Or not. We don't know. <laughs> we kind of, we're kind of very finicky in that we rotate our builds every few couple of days. So if you like something, you may want to pick it up then or else you might not find it again. You two are little miracle workers. Imagine being able to change this whole place in a couple days. <laughs> hey, I got a question. Yes. I learned how to play the piano, all right? They're real big, like you can't take them. And I, I'm a traveling sort. Could you make a piano what was small that I could take with me? Eloy, I love you. They both they both kind of just like look at each other and then just like do that like just like rub their chins. If you commission us, you might give us a couple of days we could do that for you. How much would that be? I'd say uh, they both look at each other. What do you think, Gimme? I don't know, Gimmick. Oh, uh, one second, please. What if they want it to be electric? No, they don't want that. No. They just wanted to do normal thing, normal things. I know, I know, but it's a commission. We could use the money. I know, and then we can make the big thing. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, <laughs> great. About two days for three fifty. I'm going to go ahead and say I want that commissioned. Fantastic. I'll, I'll go halves with you. Halves, halves. You have yourself a deal, sir. We'll I'll one up both of you and just say I'll bankroll it for your assistance <gasps> and for putting you into dire straits with your hangover. <laughs> All right. Wake, I greatly appreciate it. All right, you got a commission. All right, so like I said, two days in game for 350. Okay. All right, is there anything else we can interest you gentlemen in? Uh, I would like to take a closer look at your daggers. All righty, uh, what you looking for? I am looking for. Well, you know what? You're the dealers here. Uh, is there anything of particular interest that you really think just stands out among your uh, among your products? Hmm. Within, of course, my price range of let's say three to four hundred. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, gimme. What do you think? I don't know, gimmick. What do you think? Hmm. I'd say we give him. Hmm. The shreddy? Hmm, the shreddy might be a little too complicated for that kind of price range. Oh, I see. Hmm. We'll show you the shreddy. Of course. Let me see the shreddy, whose name I quite enjoy. You are handed a small dagger uh, that it looks literally like a, like a puzzle piece, sort of like broken. Mm. Like it's, it literally looks like the blade goes straight up. It's a straight dagger, but it looks like a key comp, like a key lock sort of thing, as on both sides going like in different directions. And if you press a button, they show you a little button on the hilt. If you press it, it kind of churns a little bit. That's Ooh, a okay. that's a chain blade. <laughs> would uh would this still count with finesse and all the things I'm good with? It does, <laughs> but it does cost it does cost a pretty penny, and for one day. You could add an extra 1d8 to any attack roll. Hmm, okay. Since it needs to be greased and oiled quite frequently. <laughs> so, as long as you, so as long as you upkeep it, you're fine? Yes. Unfortunately, like I said, it's going to go, like, they're, they're pretty much going to explain to you that while this is usable, once this goes into the flesh, the oil kind of just, like, rots away for that one hit. So, as long as you have oil to churn it, mm -hmm. you can infinitely use it. It's just that you're probably going to have to spend an action to re-oil this. To re-oil it every, like, attack? Yes. Okay. What if I'm looking for something that's just 
reliable and does not need quite as much upkeep. Quite as not as quite as much upkeep, eh? They can give you a plus one dagger. Okay. And how much would that be? That'd be two hundred. Two hundred? I'll take it, sirs. All righty, get you a plus one dagger. Bada bing. All right, plus one. Next no one's to gonna it. buy the shreddy. I know. Listen, <laughs> it, 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 we tested it, but it just doesn't agree with a lot of people. No, it's fine. Shut up. Anything else we could buy for you? We can get for you, gentlemen. I've been thinking about this, and I pull off my uh, spear real quick. How much would it cost to get this thing? Sil how much would it cost to get the spearhead on this silver plated? Hmm, silver plated. We fortunate, unfortunately, we don't have a lot of silver. If you could find us some silver, we could probably get it done in a day. All right, works for me. I put it back on my back. I got ninety silver pieces. Could you melt those down? That's too little, unfortunately. All right, just joking. They're probably gonna get the tip of the dag of the blade with something as big of his. Well, gentlemen, we you heard of ladies. <laughs> <laughs> just the tip. <laughs> All right. Well, if there's anything else, gentlemen, we'll get to work on our commission. Sounds I, good. I think for now that's all we'll need. We'll uh, we'll go and search for some birds for you later to uh, pretty up a suit for this fella. And, Alrighty. Uh, I actually pull out the uh, a map that I won last night. Now you were talking about Piranha Cove, was it or Piranha Bog? Okay. Uh, where on this map would that be? And I just kind of like roll out the map, not letting them know what it is. They look at it. I'm gonna roll an intelligence check for these gentlemen. Oh, pretty good. Oh, this is the South Island. Ah. Piranha Bog's going up north. Ah, okay, thank you. Sorry. I'm just trying to get the uh, lay of the land. I no, that's fair. Put it back in my little map. I'm sure if you go to the general store, they'll be able to get you a map. <laughs> ah. A proper map. So anything else? Uh, nothing from this place until I get silver. I think we're all good, gents. Yeah. All right. all right, well, thank you. Come again. Meanwhile, we have to get back to work. Thank you for stopping by. Of get course. back on the target plate. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you two, have fun. Lovable Wait. fellas, aren't Will they? do. <laughs> Hold still, I'm aiming for the face! As you shut the door, you hear another gunfire. <laughs> you missed! <laughs> kind of, yeah. That's what I was going to go for. All right, gentlemen, now where to? All right, well, uh, let's see. All right, we got uh, the collective, or we've got the... Um, Carve house. The carve house. Yeah, we got yeah. the carve house or the well, collective. Well, if you want to roll a general perception check, I can also tell you what other shops are around. That one. Twelve. Thirteen. All right. Uh, what you can tell that's around here... I look around and just stare directly at the sun. Ah! Nothing up there! <laughs> <laughs> All righty. Well, you can also see that place that Red was talking about, the uh, Rest Easy Caster. It almost looks like an obsidian building, kind of just like erected, almost like a tower. Uh, the Rest Easy Caster, and then there's the Mead Trading Company, which is the general store, which is just a few, like, two stores down. I that catch your eye. And also, you notice out of the corner of your eye, if you remember correctly, Mary had warned you something about a place called Black Street. You actually see the avenue that leads into it. Hey, hey, wait, there's a general store over there. I like the idea of having a map so as we know where we're going. You know, that makes a lot of sense to me, to be honest. All right, that's fair. Let's head in, let's head into the general store. All right, you head into the general store. Hello, welcome to the general store. <gasps> it's just standing right there, spinning a sign. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> there he is, your boy, Timothy. T no, 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 I'm sorry. He needs to be properly pronounced as Timothy. Timothy. <laughs> Timothy. Hi, Timothy. Hello, hello, donkey man. <laughs> I love Timothy so much. He, says, he seems like a really he is good great. soul. <laughs> I put your boat away, Mr. Man. I put it. Uh, I put it in the carve house with the other friends. If you wanna wanna make sure uh, you want to get that, then what I suggest you do is you go ahead and talk to yourself to Corey Hillquest. Thank you very much, Timothy. You did a good job. I give. I, <laughs> I I actually attempt to hand him a gold. <laughs> He's dead as a doornail. Looking at this now. <laughs> We're best friends now. <laughs> I'm glad. D will you take this? Because he goes to hug you. Yup. What do I roll? <laughs> what is your AC? Uh, my AC is 17. 
you take it like a champ, but boy, howdy, do you feel your back crack. <laughs> We went now. Timothy, no, no! You just see a, <laughs> you see, you see a, you see a, a woman kind of just come out with a broomstick, just hitting him on the face, like, no, stop! Put down the customers. How many times have I told you this? I am so sorry, sirs. I'm so sorry. It's okay. We're friends. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez. I'm so sorry. Please come in. I'll, I'll get you an ice pack. I'm, I'm so sorry. Timothy, go back out to the pumpkin patch right now. Yay! I get to make sure the scarecrows don't touch the pumpkins. <laughs> See you later, Timothy. The, you see you later, too. He picks up the stump and just waddles on over. <laughs> Please, d and also don't mind that. Like, he likes to believe he's actually a pirate, so he kind of just, like, pretends that that's his peg leg. <laughs> I was wondering about that. <laughs> Didn't know if he had back issues, but clearly he lifted me just fine. <laughs> no, he just, he's like, yeah, just, he, he does that on purpose. He does that just to fit in. I'm so sorry. Please, I'm... Yeah, you obviously know who Tim uh, Timothy is. His, I'm going to call him by his proper name, not the name that everyone likes to believe he calls himself, because that's his pirate name, as it seems. My name is Abigail McCallick. Th welcome to the general store. How may I help you? Well, uh, I think we need a map of the area. A map? Oh, certainly. Well, which part? Because there's the town map. Uh, I can give you what's charted of the north and what's charted of the south. Hmm. I'll take a... Uh, and I'll take both. Oh, very good. Uh, that'll be 50 gold, please. Lordy. <laughs> Done. I know. I'm, I, I, I can see the look on your face when it comes to the price hike. It's unfortunate due to the you-know-what happening around town. Of course. <laughs> how much do you pay for maps? Pay? Like, if I were to chart out some more of this, how much would you pay oh, for a more complete map? Well, that's actually something you would want to bring to the carve house. Uh... Something, but if you brought it to me, I could probably try and get it reprinted for, oh, I don't know. If you could take most of the north, that would actually be very beneficial to us, considering that that's where we're going to have you boys be sent. I am aware of why you're here. Of course you are. Everybody <laughs> seems to be. Well, it's weird that we're not allowed to talk about it, but everybody well, seems to know. Well, uh, you're, you're speaking to most of the people <laughs> yeah, who are, who part are of, working with him. Right. Who are working with Mead as his crew. We actually sailed the seas with him. Nice. But, uh, not Timothy, though. I'd rather he not join that lifestyle. What's his story? Oh, well, uh, a couple of years ago, uh, before, uh, while we were actually getting this town a little bit more set up, uh, Jahal Cove, as a town itself, is sort of new. Hmm. Uh, we tried to make this as, like, a beacon of just general, like, just accommodations for any pirate who would like to sail this way. And, uh, we... We're on a raid, and we found that the Navy came by and actually tried to port up a new, uh, a new port uh, somewhere near the coastline just south of one of their major cities. And we found that Timothy was there as one of the casualties, but we actually found out he was still alive. Our necromancer actually did a really good number of making him, you know, not dead. I see. I know, I, I kind of, like, not describe that properly. I mean, pretty much she's saying that the, the necromancer on their team ra uh, got him back up. She helped out with running errands to make sure that he stays alive. He kind of got attached to the crew, and now she's adopted him as her son. Aw. <laughs> well, that is adorable, and I think you have done this entire town a service by bringing this gentleman here. Yes, yes. Oh, one second. She, like, turns over to the side and opens up a window. Don't step on him this time! If you're gonna scare the birds away, just wave your hands! Yes, Mom. <sighs> it's really hard to grow pumpkins in this goddamn town. I bet. How much does a boy like that eat? <laughs> a lot. I imagine. There's... I, uh... I bet his one stomach is bigger than all three of mine put together. <laughs> so... If you were looking to actually fill up a map, I can probably give you 75 for it. Okay. Well, I'll see what the... Uh... For each section you can char carve off. She kind of gives you the map, and she shows you that it's sort of like this... Pla uh, this uh, ooh. <laughs> it's sort of like uh, this map here, where it's uh, all blocked out and uh, almost... It's like a nautical map. Right. But the, pro the problem is is that a lot of it is, in is not really visible because they haven't really gone up to check it out as much. They've been mostly just hanging around the cove to make sure that, you know, 
the forts, everything's defended. Right. No one's really been able to go fuck about because of the lockdown. All right. Well, I'll see. Uh, I'll see what the carve house also offers for such a task. Okay. Yes, if you're actually looking for anyone who's willing to help you boys, and if as long as you're discreet about it and don't really explain why, there are a lot of folks who will take up jobs for free. Not, I'm sorry, not jobs for free. There are people who will take up jobs with very few questions asked. Hmm. As long as the money's provided, I take it. Yes. Or if you could do them a service. Uh, trade also works when it comes to getting a mercenary to help you out at the carve house. Real quick, I'm also curious. Would you happen to have like any sort of like like a notebook or like a like a notebook and pen, just something for yes, me to be able to scribble ten, things down? Yes, we do. For ten silver. Ten silver. You've got yourself a deal. Would you like uh, pen and ink with that? Uh, yes, please. Alrighty, she will supply that with you with the ten. Thank you. If I'm gonna be doing some entertaining, I might need to Alrighty, start scribbling so down some skills. Now that you got the <laughs> maps, for what areas that are marked on there, uh, when you are navigating or trying to find your way through this area, I will give you advantage rolls on them. All right. So that will be a survival check with advantage. Cool. And how about you, sir? Anything for you? No, I think I'm good. <laughs> All righty. Uh... There, we An do have nine centaur actually, with no needs. Yep. Actually, what what have you got to keep the rain off a of, off a of fella? The rain? Well, hmm. I got powerful wet up on that boat. I see. Well, we can sell you a tarp for a silver piece. I'll take it. Very well. You now have a you now have a ten foot tarp. <laughs> Perfect. All right. Well. We'll need to stop by the carve house if we're going to go out, because uh, a lot of my possessions are on that boat. Alrighty. So, is that will you take you guys to get to the carve house? Leave? To the carve house. All right. So, thank you for your service, Abby. <laughs> thank you very much, dear. You have a good day. Goodbye, Timothy. Oh, you, you, yeah, you, 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 you hear <laughs> <laughs> as he runs through the back door. <laughs> Goodbye, friend. <laughs> Timothy, that's the fourth door today. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Abby. It's fine, that just means he has to go to the gimmies and get a new door <laughs> with the wood that's very scarce now because of the lockdown. I throw, like, Leave. two pieces of gold. <laughs> Hopefully this covers the door. If not, I can get you on another She just, trip. like, claws it, and she's just like, it'll do. <laughs> Timothy, go get a new door. Yay, I'm helping! And he fucking just runs out through the through the pumpkin patch. <laughs> Timothy! <laughs> Good old Timothy. <laughs> See, what the best part is, is that when he runs out, his legs are fine. He just does the artificial waddle, and the stump is breaking the pumpkins. <laughs> just each time, every single <laughs> slam down is a pumpkin gone. And he oh. breaks through the fence, too. Oh, good old Timothy. <laughs> that boy. <laughs> All right, let's, uh... I bid adieu, and I start making my way down to the uh, carve house. Alrighty. Uh, Risf on this, uh, here will just go. Since I, we're actually rather close to the collective, I'll just head over that way and meet you there, Eloy. Ooh, can we go there first if it's right close? All right, sure. <laughs> All right, so you're going to take that instead? Yeah. All right, so uh, you follow Risf all the way to the edge of town. Uh, you, you can actually see, like, the wall of the town, like, erected as it's on the side. Like, there's the cemetery behind it, and then there's the collective. It's a giant temple that is, like, stretched out across the wall. You go inside, it is very, la like, it is huge. There's stained glass all over the place depicting various gods. There's uh, a lot of pews for people to sit down and pray. The there are a bunch of people, like, the pews are actually in front of each window with a little small statue garnishing and foretelling, like, a piece of their teachings. There's not a lot to every single god, but at least it has something for everyone to pray to. And there's not really a lot of people. There's probably, like, one or two, like, little old like old folk just, like, sitting in front of their respected pews, like, muttering a few prayers to themselves. There is an old man. Now, I want you guys to think Frollo. Okay. okay. There is a Frollo man. I'm telling you this right now. And that makes red, me automatically not trust him. <laughs> red robe. Red robe. And it's, like, flowing out, too. This man's got, like, lavishing clothing. Five rings on each finger, <laughs> laced, each with, like, different god symbols, almost like how Risp has. I guess, children, how may I help you? Uh, 
Excuse me, Mr. Mr. Priestman. Eloy is very nervous with all these <laughs> gods around. As far as Eloy is concerned, gods are things that you hope don't notice you. They're all listening. <laughs> Excuse me, Mr. Priestman, sir. I, I, I have a problem. My son, what is your problem? Uh, okay, I, I I don't know what all these other gods are, but when where, where I growed up, we all prayed to Old Lady Big Rock Mountain, but I was never no good at it, and she sent rock slides and killed my friends. I see. You feel your faith is wavering, my son. Yeah, I, I don't want her to send rock slides at me no more. It is quite all right, my son. I would like you to present yourself to this statue. He kind of, like, like slowly meanders himself over towards, like, at, like to the right. And now there's what looks like a chimera, a symbol of a chimera. And with it, he's standing on Earth. It's a brass uh, emblem, by the way. Well, this is Udath. I would like you to at least pray to Udath, for he is one who is close to what you are asking for. He is not a benevolent. He is not a benevolent god. Hmm. He is a, actually a very kind soul. Wait. We stand on as their teachings go. We stand on him. We we walk upon him, and with that, he walks with us. Please, give your time to at least pray to this one, and he will give you your blessing. M Mr. Rudolph, sir, I don't know if you know Old Lady Big Rock Mountain, but she was the mountain. Where my tribe lived, and she was also the god we prayed to, and I was never no good at praying to her, and she was real powerful mean to me, and if you could put in a good word for me, boy, I would sure appreciate it. Roll me religion check. Let's see, religion. Ooh, Ooh. nat 20, 21. Ooh. For you and you alone, you notice as if the maw of the statue is breathing. You feel the earth around you feel somewhat lighter, but easier to travel on. For the next 24 hours, difficult terrain does not apply to you. Ooh. I, <laughs> I already get that because I'm a donkey, but I feel real good about it. <laughs> <laughs> you, feel, you feel a pep in your step. You feel as though like a weight from your legs has been lifted. You feel like you can walk faster now. Thank, thank you, Mr. Rudolph, sir, and thank you too, sir, Mr. Mr. Priestman, sir. Son, please, my name is Father Dorn. Thank you, Father Dorn. Hey, that's the guy we're looking for. And I know who you are, Eloy, Ezra, Wake. Oh. Yes, I know, I'm sure you have been getting that for quite some time. You weren't the one that helped Timothy, were you? What do you mean by help? Brought him back? No, that was not I. Okay. That was... Oh, I really wish he would stop using this name, but unfortunately it stuck with him throughout ever since he came onto the crew. Mr. Mead's employment of Mr. Rattles at, Mr. The, Rattles at the magic shop. Ah. <laughs> that would be your man who rescued Timothy from the brink of death. Okay. I was the one who was... Who, I was the one who discovered the Navy's ploy in taking out his village. That is sort of my job. I am being my ver uh, my vast uh, my vast knowledge of religious figures. I actually used this sort of power to me uh, to make my way onto naval ships and gather information for the party. All right. Well, um... congratulations! You found Mead's info broker. <laughs> Father Dorn, info broker. A naval info broker, anyway. Is that D-A-W-N? Uh, Dorn, Dorn. Dorn, D-O-R-N. Dorn. I assume you know what's... Well, of course you know what's going on around town. Of course. We've been charged with trying to figure out some things about who might be behind some of this, and... I noticed there's one specifically shady part of town. Do you, are you there types of people that hang around there that might know more about this? You speak of Black Street, do you not? I do. Yes, the followers of Deimos actually frequent that shop, uh, frequent that area. 
Unfortunate. I, I do know of how to actually access the street. It's actually a labyrinth. Hmm. Only those who know of Deimos will actually walk their way into Black Street proper. I'm gonna I roll could... a religion check and see if I know who Deimos is. Go for it. 13. 13. To your knowledge, Deimos could be anyone. That's their religion. This is the this is the religion of like shadows and occult and, uh, and darkness. Okay. And to prevent anyone from ever knowing who the true Deimos is, in every town there's always one person who takes the role of Deimos, so no one knows who the real Deimos is. Okay. So for all you know, the god of the, the god himself could be walking could with be, you. You just don't know if he's the yeah, real deal. Could be among us. All right. Could be no demos. No, oh, that is true. It was all a ploy. But Shh. gods get real mad when you say they're not real, man. <laughs> Eloy, you look over and the rat is now looking at you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Did I say something wrong? It's nothing's happening. It's just it, it, it's now looking back forward. You might be crazy, Eloy. <laughs> or incredibly receptive to gods. <laughs> <laughs> So yes, Father Dorn does know a way, uh, the proper way into Black Street because he tells you that if you go the wrong way, it just leads you right into the sewers. Oh, fun. So how does one enter Black Street? Do you have a map? I have several maps. I pull out the one that consists of the town. He marks down the proper, uh, the proper like ways and which back alleys for you to go into to lead you into Black Street proper. So you now have you now have a way to find the thieves guild of this town. But I warn you, don't speak of Deimos until he decides to make himself known. Rule number one, do not talk about Deimos. Have we seen a Rist here since we got here? Rist is here. He's he's making the rounds. He's been like praying to okay. every single god. This whole time. He's like probably like two left to go. Okay. I, 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 I pointed him. I've never been a particularly religious sort. Did the gods mind that, you know, you pray to all of them? Like, don't they think, you know, picking favorites? Like, aren't some of them kind of selfish? We, unfortunately, re we say that to Risk, but he finds comfort in, be in knowledge that he knows at least something of each god, and it is of his own volition. Each god actually is, each god doesn't actually feel welcome with a, with a certain other. There are those that conflict with each other, but Riss feels that his devotion and his power to understand every single one of them is a benefit to him, and it gives him peace. Well, he can do him. A Pantheon fellow. Yes, he is a Pantheon fellow, but Father Dorn has pretty much told you that if you like a certain god, there's chances are another god is not going to like that. Man, there's just no winning with these guys. <laughs> I'm sorry, gods! Every face, every <laughs> statue is now looking at you. Guys, can I wait outside for the rest of this? <laughs> <laughs> Eloy, I think you've said your piece to the god you needed to talk to. I think it's fine if you go outside. Thank not you. that I'm in charge of you, Eloy. You are your own person. <laughs> All right, and uh, Father Dorn asks if there's any other blessings that any of you guys need. Do you? Uh, unfortunately, that means that you have to roll a religion check to see if there's anything that would benefit you. All right. Uh, religion is intelligence, correct? Yeah. Uh, that's 15. I rolled an 11. You rolled an 11. Unfortunately, you can't really think of any at this point. You on the Nothing other. Nothing for hand, me, Padre. Hmm. You on the other hand. No, there is a god of balance, and his name is Zuhan, and his emblem is the monkey. I hear you All don't right. mess with him. <laughs> don't mess with the Zuhan. <laughs> yeah. Yep, so you head your way on over to Zuhan, and would you like to say your place? Uh, say your piece. <laughs> this is a god of balance and a god of just stability. And this could be body and soul. Yeah. I look at I look at this uh, statue. I've never been much for <laughs> prayer since the elders of my village were taken from me. Interesting. At a time like this, I feel conflict. 
conflict that I need to resolve, and in order to get there, I need to do a task. In order to finish this task... I just need... Balance. <laughs> I look at the damn thing like, I'm bad at this. <laughs> Roll me religion. Apparently I'm not that bad at it. Got a 14. You don't gain any benefit, but you feel as though some force acknowledges your words. <laughs> now my staff was a religious symbol in my town. Is it like... I'm actually going to ask Father Dorn about that. Your staff? Yeah, my staff has a bunch of like carvings on the side of it. It belonged to like the head monk. He was a relatively holy man, but I never really followed what he was preaching. All right, uh, he takes a look at your staff. The village was a lot about like nature and stuff like. Yeah, that. Yeah, he, uh, you, your village was one who uh, followed under the rule of Kelpie, which was one who was with the sea. So mm -hmm. you pretty much like, you you studied under folks who worshipped the sea and feared its might, but also respected it. Yeah. So, that staff you hold has something to do with Kelpie. Alright, so. Not much beyond that, not much beyond what I kind of already knew. Alright, cool. So, with that, you guys make your peace and head over to the carve house. We take our lead. Cool. Alrighty. Uh, we're getting wrapped up for time, but I'm going to leave this off on a very good cliffhanger, actually. Okay. Alright, so you head on inside. And you take notice to the fact that there are a bunch of pirates. There are, these guys are just flat out sailors. They are, oh boy, there's a hodgepodge of folks here. There's a fella on the side. There's Pliskin right now. Pliskin is hanging out. He's actually like taking a knife and taking at someone's fingers right now. He's having a grand old time. Everyone's laughing about it. There's people drinking. There are a few people who are kind of sour about the fact that uh, the... The port is closed now because some of them kind of already know that like something's afoot and they keep getting pushed off from getting on their ships. So they're like, all right, I guess we're here now just to find some kind of work. And uh, when you guys enter, Pliskin kind of like sits up and goes, Oi, that's the boys, Coley. So Clory, the man who he's speaking of, is a very, very dapperly dressed dwarf. He is, like, this man is captain. I, he is captain to a T. He's got, like, a fucking broken emblem of a ship wheel on, on a giant belt loop. He's got a big dark brown and red, outf uh, red cloak. And he's sitting there with, oh boy, he's got an eye patch. Let me tell you this. And it's encrusted with diamonds. Ooh. And sitting next to him is a really, really strange fellow. Uh, one last roll for the night. Roll perception. Uh, 15. 19. 10. You can't, you are kind of weirded out by this, but this man looks like a giant gator man. <laughs> he is like just that sitting. He's hard to miss. I was gonna say, we need to <laughs> no, 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 he's hard, he's hard to miss, but like he's sitting in the shadows. But like you can tell that this boy is a, he's a lizard folk. Okay. Green, like completely green, like green skinned. Scales coming from his snout, going all the way up and around him. He's got jowls for days. This man is rotund. <laughs> and he's got he's kind of got like a little bit of like f like plant coming out of the side of him. He's on like chewing tobacco, but also like a kind of plant like that he's wheat. biting on. Not wheat, but it is some kind of weird other kind of plant that almost is akin to that. Okay. He's sitting there just like like feet on the table, and by the way, like, he's taking up most of the table now that he's sitting there. He's kind of using his tail as balance also not to break the chair, and he's got a giant blunderbuss almost the same size as him as he looks over to you all with a really huge toothy smile, and that's where we'll cut it for now. Okay. Oh, boy. I bet he's going to be our new friend. I sure he hope like so. A nice guy. <laughs> well, thank you all for joining us here at the table. We appreciate your patronage here tonight. Oh, oh we're losing, wow. we're losing footage. Losing, here. losing cameras. Oh, oh, oh boy. Well, ah, the people can still hear us. Uh oh. We'll be. Uh, oh boy. We lost all. Cameras. We lost all the cameras. Well, well, hey, you can still hear us. Great. Yeah. There oh, we are. Oh, there it is. All right. Ah, almost. I got one. 
That oh, had no, one. No, it, nope. Oh, okay, one. well. Good thing that it happened at the end of the night. <laughs> yep. Anyway, thank you all for joining what us here. What did you do to that, anger that, Demos? That, that, <laughs> <laughs> thank you all for joining us here at the table. We'll be doing some uh, last read-offs here. Yep. And uh, thank you all, and we'll see you next time at the table. Yeehaw. <laughs>